A guy that's 220 pounds. He's their bread and butter guy. They're going to go to him early and often. Let's go, Steve. On defense, Michigan, only the strength of this team is the defense week in, week out. And in the middle of that defense, Percy Snow is one of the best in the Big Ten. Of the Michigan State defense is to keep everybody off of snow and let him range from sideline to sideline. He leads the team in tackles. He's third in the conference. He's their hunter. He'll hunt you down from sideline to sideline. Want to show you something about these two teams, and let's take a look at something statistically that's really surprising. When you consider all the great runners and the year in rushing prowess of Ohio State. Look at the numbers here this year. In rushing yardage, Ohio State just 126.6 yards a game rushing. That ranks ninth in the Big Ten. A couple years ago, would you have ever thought that Ohio State would have more passing yardage than rushing yardage? What is Woody Hayes doing right now in his grave? Rolling over and said, how can you do that? On the other end of the uh, spectrum, of course, Michigan State, led by Blake Ezor, has done very well on the ground. Well, they run the ball very effectively. You'll see their passing game isn't doing very well and we're going to talk about that a little later all right we've got a nice match up here a beautiful day for football here at east lansing it is michigan state playing host to ohio state and we'll be back to take a look around the big 10 conference review what happened last week preview today's action when we return to east lansing Today's game is being brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft, gold filtered for real draft taste. By Ameritech, solutions that work. By Apple Computer, maker of Macintosh personal computers, giving you the power to be your best. And by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? It is a gorgeous day for football in the late fall at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, home of the Michigan State Spartans and a sellout crowd filing in. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wayne Larravee with Jim Grabowski. We've got a lot that's going to be happening here at Spartan Stadium today, but let's take a look at what happened last week in the Big Ten Conference. And there you get a look at it. Michigan over Indiana. The Wolverines take control of the Big Ten race. They held a slim 7-6 halftime lead, then scored 17 third-period points while limiting the Hoosiers' top-ranked rushing attack to just 89 yards. A little razzle-dazzle right here. Greg McMurtry threw a 46-yard TD pass to Chris Calloway off the reverse. The fake of the reverse really fooled the Indiana secondary. You see Callaway wide open in the end zone. Big score in that third period for Michigan. Ohio State, uh, the Gophers of Minnesota had a chance to win that ball game. Failed to score inside the Buckeye one-yard line with less than two minutes to play. Elsewhere in the Big Ten Conference, Michigan State over Illinois. The Spartans rounding from a 14-0 deficit. We're going to get a look at one of the players we'll see a lot of today. We've already talked about him. Blake Ezor, number 26. He's their bread and butter guy for the Spartans. When you need the yards, they go to Ezor. Ezor rushed for 113 yards in that game. First win of the season for the Wildcats of Northwestern. Byron Sanders a big day with 181 yards and two touchdowns. Iowa defeated Purdue 31 to 7. They broke open a tight ball game with three second half touchdowns, including perhaps the catch of the week in the nation. Watch this. And it was a great catch. This is Hart lead to Devin Harberts. Now watch this reception right here. One-handed right at the goal line, reaches over. Look at that grab. One-handed, touchdown, and that broke the back of Purdue Boilmakers. All right, Devin Harberts of the Iowa Hawkeyes celebrate there. There you get a look at the standings in the first division. Michigan in the catbird seat. Indiana now playing from behind. Iowa still unbeaten in conference play. Illinois and Michigan State both have one conference loss. Purdue is break-even to round out the top five. In the second division of the Big Ten Conference, Northwestern and Ohio State are in their first conference wins last week. Minnesota and Wisconsin round out the uh, standings. Here's uh, what's coming up today. The big game has Iowa at Indiana. That is the number one offensive team in the Big Ten against the most stingy defense in the Big Ten, Iowa. I think it'll be a heck of a matchup. We've got Tony Stewart and Anthony Thompson running against each other. It'll be a heck of a game. Illinois plays at Minnesota later on, fighting Illini looking for their fifth win of the season overall. Nationally ranked Michigan leading the Big Ten is in Evanston today to meet the Northwestern Wildcats. And Purdue is in Madison visiting the Badgers. Boilers look to even their record overall and go to 3-2. and two. 
in the conference. And our presentation today, the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Michigan State Spartans. And, you know, Michigan State has struggled in the passing game despite the presence of one of the top wide receivers in the country. And Jim Grabowski, what are they going to do to get that passing game on tech? Wayne, Michigan State is last in the Big Ten. As you said, they got one of the great receivers in the country in Andre Risen. The reason he's only caught 20 passes is because he's double covered wherever he goes. Now, I expect the Spartans to get in some offensive formations that will make it more difficult for Ohio State to double cover Ryzen. And if they do, that other receiver is going to be wide open. Let me show you what I think is going to happen today. I look for Michigan State to line up in this type of formation. You'll see number one here. That's Andre Ryzen. This will be the other wide receiver, either, either Boyer or Wilson. They'll line in a tandem or what they call a tandem or shadow type of formation, one behind the other. Now, this formation makes the tight end ineligible. Now, look, this is Mandrich on this side. I don't really expect him to catch any passes out there today. So Ohio State will roll their defense. They'll put the both safeties to this side and try to match up three against two. What Michigan State's idea is that with these two guys coming down the field, one will get lost. Now, they scored a touchdown against Illinois last week by this type of, of pattern right here. Andre Risen came down the field on a post pattern into the inside. Both safeties came with Risen. This left Wilson wide open in the end zone here. Now, if Ohio State rolls everything over this side, look for Michigan State to counter by putting their fullback right up here, taking the quarterback, McAllister, and just rolling them out on a planned run. Let's see if it happens today. Now, here are the keys to today's game. The Miller Musts. Wayne, for Ohio State, they must have tight coverage on Andre Risen. He's the game-breaker. If they let him loose, it's all over. And they must force turnovers. Ohio State is last of the league in that category. If they expect to win, they have to get turnovers. And they must have patience on, patience on offense. Michigan State does not give you anything deep, so Ohio State has to throw underneath and be very patient in their offensive scheme. For, Mich for Michigan State... They must contain Carlos Snow. He's Ohio State's game breaker. He has an average of 32 yards on kickoff returns. He can run the long one from the line of scrimmage. And they must pressure Greg Fry. He's a young, inexperienced quarterback. He can be rattled if you put pressure on him. And they must control the line of scrimmage. Michigan State is a ball control team. To do that, you must win in the pits, and that's what they got to do this afternoon. All right, Jim Grabowski, it is a beautiful day for football and temperature a bit touchy on the cool side. It's an overcoat type day, but skies are sunny. Winds out of the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Flurries expected late in the day here in the East Lansing area. And here is the uh, series record between these two schools. Ohio State has dominated. Michigan State won last year. Ohio State won the toss and decided to defer their decision. Michigan State, in turn, elected to receive the opening kickoff from Ohio State. Pat Morrow getting set to start the festivities here today. He is a junior out of Radford, Virginia. One of the better kickers in the country. He's kicked a Big Ten high, 13 field goals. Pat Morrow. John Cooper on the sidelines in his first year at Ohio State. It's been a tough season thus far. He's had a lot of injuries and some defections and some problems in that area. But for the most part, let me tell you, that guy's going to get it done. He has won wherever he's been. Twin safeties back deep for Michigan State. Alan Haller and Highland Hickson are back deep. And it is Haller. for a moment then was erased on the play by Zach Dumas a junior cornerback and it's a first and ten for Michigan State across the 20 yard line let's set the Michigan State lineup for you if we can for Michigan State the interior line Mandarich of course outstanding and Kula on the left side that's the strength of that line for the most part Kevin Robbins also a very good tackle Andre Risen one of the best in the conference and in the country for that matter Blakey's are very dangerous out of the backfield Wayne right away they're coming in that hand of offense first and ten Michigan State from the state 22 yard line this is Ezor got almost two yards out to the 24-yard line. We'll set the Ohio State defense for you here. The Buckeyes set up this way on the front line. Derek McCready comes off a very strong game at Minnesota. Looking to the linebacking core. 
The outside people, Kaczerski and Zizekovic. Although we expect again to see a little bit of uh, Mike McRae, who's been injured in recent weeks. Mike McRae, very fine outside linebacker. Looked like Mandarich jumped off sides ahead of the snap. And I would think this is going to make it second down and a long yardage situation now for Michigan State. A legal procedure, five yard penalty. It'll be second down at about 13 yards to go. John Cooper. Very fine program at Tulsa and went over to Arizona State won a uh, Rose Bowl there. And they hope he'll win many Rose Bowls at Ohio State. I tell you, Tony Manridge did jump offside, but when he comes, he really comes. I almost did. That's why he Second down and about 12 it. yards well, to go now for Michigan State. Football to the 20-yard line. He's on. Good read off the right side of the line, and he's over out to the 28-yard line. Gain of about eight yards. Take a look at it up top. Well, we're going to see Ezor start left, sees the hole back to the right side. Good read right away. Sees an opening right there, shoots through. You show his quickness right there. He sees the hole. He makes the best of it. Third down coming up for Michigan State. Third and about four. Two wide receivers out to the bottom of your screen. Wilson and Ryzen. Ryzen the dangerous one. McAllister on the roll. Intended for Gusevich, the tight end, at near the 35-yard line of the coverage provided by Jim Peel. Sreko Zizekovic was bearing in on the quarterback, and McAllister had a little, a little bit too much on that ball. Someone got in free from Ohio State. Rush McAllister's throw. Bobby Allen dropping back deep. There's Josh Butlin, the fine punter for Michigan State. The ranks... Third in the Big Ten, 16th in the nation. Bobby Allen, former walk-on, has done an outstanding job as a kick returner and a wide receiver for Ohio State. But let them go pressure. Beautiful spiral. Olive over the shoulder catch. Back pedaling to the 22, and he steps out of bounds. Just across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Butlin's first punt, a 50-yarder. The return, five yards. And it's a first to 10. Let's set the offense. The interior line thought to be a strength for Ohio State. Didn't play as well as they expected early in the season. Coming along very well right now. Eulen Hake is an outstanding center in the middle of that line. At tight end, Jeff Ellis leads the team with 20 receptions. And we've already talked about Carlos Snow. He is dangerous in the offensive of backfield. And Greg Fry, quarterback for Ohio State, had a fine ball game last week at Minnesota. First and 10 from the 28-yard line. Fry under some pressure. Wide open is Jeff Ellis for a first down. Out near the midfield marker on a 21-yard gain. John Miller made the tackle to the secondary. Oh, an excellent job by Greg Fry, the quarterback. He was under pressure from Chris Sunlin, but he found Ellis wide open in that zone. Let's take a look at Fry now. Play action to Snow. Now look at the pressure coming in from 64 Sunlin. Nice step move by Fry. And look at wide open Ellis. First and 10 from the 49 of Michigan State. Matlock. Bounced off one defender, angled out of bounds on the far side. Benson Donaldson got it done. Set the defense for you. For Michigan State, strong defensive line. John Buddy is the son of Ed Buddy, former All-Pro guard of the Kansas City Chiefs. Travis Davis has been outstanding on the interior portion of that line. In the linebacking core, Carlos Jenkins is having a fine year. So is Percy Snow, who struggled early in the season, but has come on to play very well now. John Miller is an All-Big Ten candidate at the safety position. Second down, about seven. Carlos Snow, short of the first down by about four yards to the Michigan State 45-yard line. Snow responded quickly. Percy Snow and Matt Vanderbeek. The left end, a junior out of Holland, Michigan, in on the stop. Third down coming up. Wayne, I'll guarantee you that George Pearl is stressed all week. You got a gang tackle, Carlos Snow. You got to get around the ball anytime he has it because if he breaks the tackle, he can go all the way. Mark Hicks now in a tailback for Ohio State out of third down, almost five yards to go. This is Fry. The middle intended for Hicks. Pass off the mark. He got some late pass rush pressure. And had a little bit too much on the ball. I believe it was uh, 
Chris Sundlin again on the pass rush at the last second. Once again, Chris Sundlin into the Ohio State backfield, putting pressure on Greg Fry, forcing that ball to be thrown a little quicker than Fry wanted to. Bowman out in punt formation. Miller is the principal deep back for the Spartans, and Bowman going for the corner of the coffin on the near side. And let's see where he ends up. Looked like a pretty good job as he pins Michigan State back to the 10-yard line. 36-yard punt, no return. And we've got a break of the action. 12.09 left to go. Scoreless to this first period of play. We'll return after these words from your local stations. Got an injured Ohio State Buckeye on the field, and it is David Brown, starting free safety junior from Utica, New York. He's being held from the field. Brown is replaced by Mark Pellini. Here's David Brown. The number's on him. Mark Pellini, a sophomore, enters the Ohio State secondary. Wayne, that's going to hurt Ohio State if Brown can't get into the ball game or come back to the game. He had a key sack last week on a Minnesota goal line drive that really preserved the win. 13 to 6 win for Ohio State up at Minnesota. First and 10 for the Spartans. They're backed up to their 10 yard line. Bobby McAllister has his offense on the field for the second time this afternoon. He's always the tailback. This is Ezor. Good move off the left side of the line. Coughed up the football, but the play had been whistled. Oh, wait a minute. It was not whistled in. Scored a fumble, and Ohio State will take over at the 17-yard line. Wayne, we said that Ohio State must force some turnovers. We'll see it right here. Ezor through the line. Let's see if we can get, find out who rips the ball loose. That looked like Pellini, who just came into the football game. Pellini, Mark Pellini, forcing the fumble. Let's take another look. There it is, Pellini, 48, ripping the ball loose. Big turnover for Ohio State. And the Buckeyes on the field at the 17-yard line of Michigan State. Carlos Snow. Hit right away by no Jason yard. Ridgeway. Got maybe... Two yards down to the 15, maybe almost three as they spot it, just inside the 15-yard line, short of the 14. Well, Michigan State continues to clog up the middle of that defensive line. That's their whole scheme defensively. Just jam up the middle, force you out to the perimeters, and then the safeties come up and make the tackle. Edwards and Graham are the wide receivers for Ohio State. Hicks in the backfield now with Matlock. Fry looks to the air. Edwards is there for the touchdown. Well thrown football by Greg Fry. 14 yard pass play. And Ohio State is on the board first, cashing in on a turnover. It was a matchup against John Miller. You'll see the tight end go in the flat. And the wide receiver, right there, good throw by Greg Fry to Bernard Edwards. You saw the matchup, Wayne. It was Edwards against Miller. Miller is a safety, used to those zones that didn't work for Michigan State that time. Pat O'Moro for the point after. He hasn't missed a point after yet this year, and he's now 12 of 12. And the Ohio State Buckeyes take a 7 to nothing lead. Let's get another look at it. Wayne, this is probably a choice route. What I mean by that is the wide receiver has a choice of inside or outside, depending, depending upon how the receiver plays it. This time, Miller played it inside. Edwards broke to the outside at six points for Ohio State. Celebration on the Buckeye sideline. They have the early lead. Wayne Larravee and Jim Grabowski. Ohio State has cashed in on a fumble. Scoring a touchdown on a short TD drive of 17 yards, 14 yard pass play. From quarterback Greg Fry to wide receiver Bernard Will Edwards, and the Buckeyes had the lead in the early going. There's a good look at George Furless. He's not very happy right now. But what a great guy, isn't he, Wayne? He's an outstanding coach and does a marvelous job with these kids. Really cares about the kids at his program. There's the scoring drive. Didn't take long. Blake Ezor fumble. I thought Ezor was down before he coughed up the ball, but as you looked on the replay, good call by the officials. They had stripped the ball from him. 
Oboro kicking off. Twin safeties back deep for Michigan State. Back into the end zone, and Allen Keller downs it for Michigan State. They see some marshmallows in the picture there in the far corner of the end zone. That's a tradition. There they are. Those are pretty big marshmallows, aren't they? I thought it was hail for a minute that was falling. We expect uh, maybe snow flurries in the uh, late night here at, at East Lansing, but uh, hopefully not during the ball game. It is a beautiful day for a college football game thus far today. This is what happened to Michigan State last week at Illinois. They got down 14-0, and they had a turnover in there deep in their own territory. That really cost them. But they came back, stormed back, and took command of the ball game. Let's see what they do right now, starting out with the first and ten from their 20. McAllister with time. That ball was tipped and intercepted on the play by John Sullivan. Penalty marker is down, and Sullivan goes out of bounds inside the can near the six-yard line of Michigan State. McAllister was going to ease or coming out of the backfield. As you said, the ball was tipped right in the arms of Sullivan, but I think it may come back. There's a flag on the play. Let's wait and see what the call is, but it may come back. It may be against Ohio State. Holding on the defense. Let's take a look at it, Jim. Let's see if we can pick up who knocked it down. Who's got a piece of it to deflect it? Well, there, there's McAllister dropping back. Really not a lot of pressure on him at all. Standing tall in that pocket. Now look at the arm of Coleman coming up. Up once, and up again. On the That's defense. it, number 92, Ken First Coleman. Down. But uh, Michigan State really dodged the bullet there. All for not. Give the uh, Spartans 10 yards and a first down from the 30-yard line off the defensive holding penalty against Ohio State. Andre Risen coming to the bottom of your screen. Bernard Wilson is the wide receiver to the top. He comes in motion. Blake Ezor. In the middle of the defense, and he shot back on the play. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Not much farther. Host of Tanklers hit on that uh, stop. Mike Sullivan, who is the twin brother of John Sullivan, led the charge along with uh, John Sullivan defensively for Ohio State. Give him a gain of a couple of yards. Second down and eight. Is it John Sullivan's one minute older, or is it Mike Sullivan that's one minute older? Well, well it doesn't believe matter, it's but uh, John, who is one minute older. His older brother, uh, the older brother is John by one minute. Second down, a little less than eight. Montgomery, short of the first down, a gain of a few yards. Out across the 35 to the 36 yard line. It'll leave a third down coming up. Good read by McAllister. He's looking down to the right side of the field, looking to wide receiver, can't find him open. A little dump pattern to the fullback, Montgomery. A safety valve type of pattern. Steve Montgomery, his brother, was an All-America putter here at Michigan State on that Rose Bowl team of last year. Third down, about four yards to go for the Spartans. Double wide receivers out to the right side. McAllister dropped the football on the handoff. He's going to have to freelance now. What a job! to the Ohio State 44-yard line, a 20-yard scamper off a broken play. This is where McAllister may be the most dangerous when he does freelance. He's an excellent runner. Let's see what happens in the handoff here. Looks like it just bounced off of Ezor. Can't tell from there really if McAllister stuck it into the stomach of Ezor, but McAllister here makes the best of it, changes directions, and right now he fakes the pass. Secondary has to honor the pass here, and he picks up the first down. <laughs> Bobby McAllister, 296 yards rushing on 62 rushing attempts coming into today's action. Of course, he's lost 127 yards in sacks, but he's a guy who could move back there. He has a different dimension for the quarterback position. Blake Ezor getting to the outside for about seven or eight yards. Zach Blake Dumas Ezor came over to make the play. Never really had his feet under him. Looked like he tripped over the 40-yard line. Wayne, if you're going to run the football out of the I formation, you must have a blocker in front of that I back. In this case, it's Steve Roberts of Montgomery, and he does a whale of a job. He took on 
Orlando Craig on the block, and he won it. He won the battle. Second rank, Fighting Irish. Off to a good start in the first period against Navy. And there's our score, first quarter. He's over, big hole. Oh, he was maybe one or two tacklers away from breaking that. Zach Dumas made the nab on the play. 12-yard gain, first down. They are really starting to move some people up front, Jim. Now, guess what side that Ezor ran over. This time off to the right, now cuts back. Right to your right, you can't see him the screen. Is Tony Mandarich blocking out, making that huge hole it takes the cornerback, Dumas, to come in and make the tackle. Ezor, six carries, 40 yards. First and 10 at the Ohio State 25. Ezor. Over to make the tackle, John Sullivan. Blake Gizor got another five yards close to the 20-yard line. He now has 45 yards. Shaky start for the Spartans here. They lost the fumble. Ohio State converted from 17 yards away into a touchdown, the only score of the game. Then an interception that was taken back by a penalty. And a fumble that was picked up by the quarterback, McAllister, and he motored back the other way for 20 yards. Now they're on the move. Gizor again. Inside the pen for a first down. He lost the handle once again, but I, I believe the play has been blown dead. Jimmy Peel made the stop in the secondary. 11-yard gain, and they're starting to shred people up front. Ezor did not have a fumble there. It was the ground that forced it, but you got to think that Ezor got to be very conscious of that. That's the second time he dropped the ball. But what hole up front again. That offensive line of Michigan State is taking control. First and goal for the Spartans at the Buckeye 9. Ezor once again, this time, didn't get very far. McCready, I believe, the man who made the stop on the play. Derek McCready, we talked about him. Six tackles, two sacks at Minnesota. Pickup of two yards. Second and goal at the seven-yard line are the Spartans trailing 7-0. First period of play, seven and a half minutes to go in the first. Boyer and Risen to the top or far side of your screen. Montgomery the fullback, Ezor the tailback. McAllister. Ezor. Inside the five, where it will be third down and goal to go. John Sullivan over to make the stop in the middle of the Ohio State defense. When they keep going to the left side, Tony Mandarich's side, and it's the matchup of Derek. McCready on Ohio State against Tony Mandarich. And believe me, Mandarich is winning the battle now. Let's take a look. There's Mac Mandarich right there, 79 on McCready. Look at the drive block by Mandarich, just of the hole that he opens up. What a what a force on the left side of, of Michigan State's offense. Bob Kula is not a bad guard either. 10th play of the drive coming up. Third down and goal to go from the Ohio State three. He's over. Lost the football into the end zone. And it's recovered by Ohio State. The Buckeyes will get it out of the 20-yard line. He fumbled it into the end zone. Wayne, you, we said Ezor's got to be conscious of this. This is the third time he's dropped the football. Two of them end up in fumble. Let's take a look. Driving into the end zone, trying to reach over into the end zone. The ball is fumbled, and it's Ohio State's football. So the Buckeyes stave off the Spartans, and Ohio State continues to lead 7-0. First period will return after these words from your local stations. For first and 10 at the 20-yard line off the fumble recovery in the end zone. Buckeyes leading with 6.33 to go, first period to play. Greg Fry at the controls. Carlos Snow. Penalty marker is down, and Snow got back to the 20, not much farther. Miller covered beautifully from the safety position. Uh, the man who strung it out was Carlos Jenkins. Penalty marker down, as we said. Holding the call against Ohio State. Virtually no gain on the play. Wayne, Michigan State does such an excellent job of going to the football. It looks like a hole's there, and they react so well to the ball closing down those holes. John Nealon adds up the fine crew of Big Ten officials on hand for today's game. Holding on the offense, 10-yard foul, still first down. 
One big reason why Ohio State leads it, 7 to nothing. Turnover on the seven-yard line of Michigan State. They cashed in for a touchdown. And then a turnover, a fumble into the end zone, recovered by Ohio State. And that staved off a Michigan State drive to the doorstep. Now it's first and 20 for the Buckeyes off the holding penalty. Snow and Matlock are behind quarterback Greg Fry. Eulen Higg is the all-Big Ten center. Carlos Snow. Beautiful move made by Chris Sunlin, who has spent the better part of the first period in the offensive backfield of the Buckeyes. No doubt about it, Wayne. That is the third time that we've seen him in the offensive backfield of Ohio State. He's been a big play player for him today. Second down, loss of one, 11 yards to go. Sunlin came into the game with six tackles for losses. Guys on a second down and 21 yards to go. Snow has some room. Fine run by Carlos Snow up across the 20-yard line. He's still short of that first down. Matt Vanderbeek chased him down for Michigan State. And that also penned in the play was Derek Reed. It shows you what speed will do. Carlos Jenkins, the outside linebacker, Michigan State, had him contained, but all of a sudden, Snow turned on the Jets, got to the outside, made a good move to break one tackle, and you can see why he's so dangerous. Third down and eight yards to go now. 13-yard gain of the previous play. Edwards and Graham, the two wide receivers to the top of your screen. Fry off the fake, chased by Sunland, gets the pass away, and a diving attempt is made. It's incomplete. Jeff Graham, the intended receiver, just beyond the first down marker on the far side. John Miller, the coverage in the Michigan State defense. Well, Ohio State had Graham open, but again, Fry under pressure by guess who? Chris Sunland. Back on to do the punting. Jeff Bowman for Ohio State. Averages about 40 yards per pop. 35.4 yards. Net. Got a high snap. It's a nice kick away. This is Miller. Has sure hands, but drops it. Miller angles it out to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. And Michigan State continues to have problems holding onto the ball. 48-yard punt, 5-yard return off the buff. We've got a break of the action. We'll be back. Ohio State in the first period continues to lead Michigan State. Americans have made top four the best-selling big pickup for the past 12 years. Ford, the best-built American truck, eight years running, built for top. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filtered one. Yeah, if you want a beer whose real draft taste hasn't been changed by heat pasteurization, we've got it down cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski, where it's Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. 4.32 left to go in this first period of play. Ohio State leading 7-0. And well, I'll tell you, Michigan State's got to be concerned. They've had trouble holding on to the ball, haven't they? Boy, they certainly have. You've got to think uh, uh, Blake Ezor has, has to be worrying about how he's, his inability to hang on to the football. When a runner gets out there, Wayne, and he feels great, everything is going, and he gets better and better. But when things like this happen to him, he doesn't run as effectively. Ezor is the tailback in the offensive formation for Michigan State. Steve Montgomery, the fullback, Blake Ezor gets the ball, and he slipped a bit in the backfield, but Harden hung on to get it out to the 40-yard line and a gain of four yards. Blake Ezor on the carry, gain of about four. Watch Tony Mandridge, number 79. Oh, he just drives out, almost out of the picture here. Just stays in his face. That's a big load there. 6'6", 315 pounds. Ken Hoffman, the uh, fine sports information director here, calls that an OTF, off the film. 
I don't know maybe it was off. It wasn't off our field, but maybe off the coach's field. To the outside, Highland Hickson has good speed for a first down into Ohio State territory to the 48-yard line. Polini made the stop, 13-yard gain. Highland Hickson, young sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Dillard High School attended the same high school that uh, brought forth Lorenzo White. Good cutback move this time by Hickson. Now watch here. He just outruns McCray, 99. Speed does it again. Gets to the outside. Big game for Hickson. At 99 is no slouch of a player. That's Michael McCray, senior out of Dayton, Ohio. One of the best outside people in the Big Ten Conference at outside linebacker. Hickson gets the call again. Penalty marker is down. Hickson got a first down to the Ohio State 35-yard line. But again, a penalty marker down. And it looked like it was in the uh, neighborhood of offensive holding. Yeah, you guessed it, Wayne. There it is, holding against the Spartans. You see that flag thrown in the middle of the line, and you got to figure it's holding on the offense. And that brings back the play. It'll be second down at about 20 yards to go. George Perlis on the sideline from Michigan State. Got an outstanding job with this program. But the important thing for Michigan State is they are opening big holes in that Ohio State defense. You get the feeling that it's only a matter of time the way they're driving the football now here late in the first period of play but again the mistakes have hurt them the fumbles two fumbles have really hurt them take a look at the rushing yardage already in the ball game for Michigan State there's the play selection though that's a, there's a big difference there only two passes and 14 runs for Michigan State they felt going in they could run on Ohio State so far that filled up first and 20 from the state 43, McAllister got a man wide open, Willie Boyer for a first down at the Buckeye 33-yard line, 25-yard pass play. Wayne, the reception was made by Boyer, but you got to credit Andre Rise, and you'll see him on the outside. Boyer is in the inside guy. Boyer takes it outside. Ryzen goes in on a post pattern. He takes the secondary guys with him, and you'll see Boyer wide open along the sideline. Well, I'd say it's just a matter of catching the ball at that point when you're that wide open. First and ten now for the 33. Highland Hickson with a good move to the outside. Clark nabs him inside the 20. Forces him out of bounds at the 17. Another Spartan first down on a 15-yard gallop. He's an exciting runner, Wayne. He looks at a hole that's clogged up inside. He takes it out to the outside. Good ability to read the field. You know, great runners have great peripheral vision. Oh, you had some peripheral vision. that You still do, <laughs> don't you? I can see everything from <laughs> sideline to sideline. You don't miss much even today. <laughs> it's just the knees went on you, that's all. First and 10 now, 17-yard line of Ohio State for Michigan State. Island Hickson on the hole off the right side of the line this time. Wrapped up on the interior portion of the line by Brian Benio, the inside linebacker for Ohio State, and it'll be a second down coming up for Michigan State. Well, we talked about Mandarich, but there's no slouches on the right side. That time, Vince Peta and Kevin Robbins opening up the hole. Strong offensive line for Michigan State, and like we said, for the first three games of the year, they missed Tony Mandarich on the left side of that line. Sixth play of the drive coming up. Hickson's had the hot hand. To the nine-yard line, he's short of the first down. Ken Coleman came over from the defensive uh, tackle position to make the stop for Ohio State. Michigan State has been able to control the, the ball game on the ground, although they trail 7-0 because they've been unable to hold on to the ball at crucial juncture. Here comes Highland Hickson. Good work by that sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. Had 106 yards rushing against Northwestern. Sat out last year due to Proposition 48. He's over the tailback at a third down. About two and a half. Blake Ezor's got the first down to the five-yard line. First and goal for George Perlis and company. Wayne, I think it really shows some confidence in Blake Ezor. He's had his problems, but they put him back in the ball game on this third down. Crucial situation. Look at a block once again. Out in front, Gusevich, the tight end. Good block by Mandarich. Now, a lot of Buckeyes are in good pursuit but not in time to prevent Ezor from getting that first down. Andre Risen is the man shaken up on the play. 
may have gotten trampled in that wave. Ryzen, the All-America caliber wide receiver for Michigan State. You know, they, uh, they have not gotten the passing game on track, and obviously here today you see the plan is to run the football against Ohio State. This young man is going to be a first-round draft choice in the National Football League. Many people believe that. Yeah, we've talked to several coaches about that, and they feel that he may be one of the best in the country, if not the best. But you don't tell by his statistics. As we said, he's only caught 20 passes coming into this football game, but you know he's caught five touchdown passes. One out of every four times he gets the ball, he scores. And this would be a real crucial injury for Michigan State if he can't come back into the football game. You know, as I said, he only caught 20 passes, but he is such a threat that you have to double cover him. Now, if he's not in the ball game, maybe Ohio State will not go into double coverage on the flanker or split end position, and that will balance out their defense much more. Let's see if we can pick up the injury now. Watch the lower left-hand portion of your screen. There is Ryzen, number one, on the left side there in green. He goes down on a side block, so to speak, as he gets caught in the middle right there and just got sandwiched. Yep. There it is. What? Wow. There's too many Andre white jerseys. Andre Risen is 5'11", 190, and that's an awful lot. You know what it looked like, Wayne, as is, is he was going into the pile, number 91, the, the inside linebacker, Brian Benio, may have got his knee into the helmet, and the Risen may have had his bell rung. Hopefully it's nothing more serious than that. I don't believe it's any kind of a leg injury. They seem to be just helping him up. He should be all right, it looks like. Mississippi leading LSU 7-0 in the first period of play. As we mentioned earlier, Notre Dame out in front of the Navy 7-0. Blake Gizor is up and a little groggy, but nonetheless, perhaps he'll be able to return to the ball game today. We hope so. Good to see that. Well, they'll take him to the sidelines, hold up a few fingers, ask him how many fingers do I have up? You know where you're at? You know this is East Lansing? Huh? I don't know. As long as they don't ask him what the date is. I don't <laughs> even know what the date is, and I haven't had my bell rung yet. First down from the five-yard line, first and goal for Michigan State. They trail 7-0. We are at Spartan Stadium at East Lansing, Michigan. A minute 35 to go in the first period of play. Ohio State on top by touchdown. Hickson is the tail of the tandem in the I formation. Hickson riding the wave down to the one-yard line. Denied the end zone by Polini and Derek McCready. They ride the wave on that left side of the line, and it is a tidal wave behind Tony Mandarich in the Tula. Exactly, Wayne. There's no big hole here, but the green offensive line is just pushing back Ohio State. Now look at here. Not a great hole, but look, he's just following the backs of his offensive linemen getting close to the goal line. Robert Kula and Tony Mandrich on the left side of that line. And also got the tight end over there. Hickson didn't make it. And it'll be third down and goal to go at the one-yard line. Watch the penetration of the Ohio State defense. Hickson deciding to go over the top. Now watch the linebacker come in and prevent the touchdown. Right there, boom. Good tackle. I can't pick up the number. Looked like it may have been Sullivan. Let's see another look at it. Orlando Craig, number 56. Good stand-up tackle preventing the touchdown. Third down and goal to go for the Spartans at the Buckeye one-yard line. Hickson, touchdown! <laughs> Only fitting that the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale would get the touchdown. He carried the mail on the drive. 70 plus thousand people here that are very happy about that score by Hyland Hickson. A real ball control drive by Michigan State. Five seconds left to go. And this is the first period of play. Langlow will attempt to tie the game. John Langlow, sophomore out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. Josh Butlin on the hold. Langlow ties the ball game at seven. Michigan State goes the distance. Let's take a look at the scoring play once again. We're going to get a view of what Highland Hickson sees. Those green jerseys starting out in front of him. There's Sullivan coming in. 
getting penetration but can't make the tackle. Now Hickson just rides the shoulders of the right side of the offensive line. That's Tata and Robbins. George Perla's team is on the board. They have dominated this first period of play, but a couple of turnovers cost them the lead. Now they've tied the contest as we get set to complete the final five seconds of the first period. This is when Ohio State adjusts their defense to go to Mandridge's side, give a little more protection on Mandridge's side, they start going to the right over Tata and Robbins. That's great balance on your offensive line. I'll tell you, Robert Kula on that uh, left side of the line, a guard, and Tony Mandridge, they're top-notch, no doubt about it, but Kevin Robbins is a good offensive tackle on the right side, and Vince Tata outstanding offensive right guard and then david martin solid in the middle at center so this is a very strong very fine offensive line for michigan state that is overshadowed by the superstar of the line tony mandarich sure you look at the size mandarich at 315 pounds but robbins is no baby he's 290 pounds they're trying to make the adjustments right there on the defense of ohio state Okay? That's it. Find the football and play ball. Andre Risen is being checked for a possible concussion. Twin safeties back deep for Ohio State. They try to keep it away from Snow. Hicks shading his eyes. Makes the catch and muffs it. It's covered by Snow at the nine. And Ohio State will start in the hole. Three seconds left to go in this first period of play. You gotta believe the sun was the factor on that play. You saw Hicks shading his eyes as the ball came into his hands. I think he lost vision. But Carlos Snow very alertly just fell on the football. Michigan State scoring drive. Much of it on the ground. I believe only one pass completion to the entire drive, if I'm not mistaken. Ten play, 64 yards, 427. Time of possession and hicks it on the one-yard run. He looks like he's going to be a fine runner for Michigan State. State Ohio State have tried to get something going here. Final play of this first quarter. Brand to the outside. And Jeff Brand, the Burley fullback, got maybe four or five yards out to the 14-yard line. We've got a break of the action. The first period has come to a close. We'll return after this. From your local station, this is the Big Ten Television Network. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski, Ohio State of Michigan State, tied at seven as we begin the second period of play here in East Lansing. Wayne, here's the statistics on time of possession. Ohio State, four minutes. Michigan State, 11. Ooh. Tells you something about how the first period went. Um, Michigan State moving the ball almost exclusively on the ground. Did an outstanding job to move the football. Two fumbles. One on the Michigan State 17-yard line by Blake Ezor. Another one by Ezor into the end zone of Ohio State. Where both fumbles were covered by the Buckeyes. That's the reason we're tied at seven apiece. There are the first period stats complete. Michigan State uh, leading big time in rushing it and in total yardage and of course we already told you about the time of possession michigan state 21 running plays three passing plays greg fry under pressure gets it away for a completion close to the first down to the big fullback scotty graham they feel he'll be an excellent uh, fullback before his career is done he's just a freshman out of long beach new york a good target out there he made the catch first down should be on a gain of 10. Good decision by Fry. It looked like he wanted to go deep, pulled the ball down, threw it underneath the linebackers. And this is what Ohio State has to do. They have to show, throw those short patterns because Michigan State's not going to give you a lot deep. John Cooper on the sidelines for Ohio State, the head coach. First down of the 20-yard line. Gain of 11 on the previous play. Hicks to the outside. Hicks running hard out close to a first down near the 30-yard line. Carlos Jenkins, the strong side linebacker, made the tackle. And we get word from the Michigan State bench that wide receiver Andre Risen will return for the Spartans. He's okay, and that certainly is good news. There is a good look at Mark Hicks, Jr., from Davie, California. Transfer from Cal Berkeley was the Pac-10 freshman of the year a few seasons ago. Second down, short yardage. 
the fullback Graham for the first down and then some gain of about four yards. First and ten for Ohio State across the 30-yard line. Well, you could almost bet that formation of short yardage. They set, set two wide receivers to the left side. You're going to run to the tight end side, to the other side of the field, tight end where the strength of the blocking is. They go to the Madlock, the short man, he gets the first down. Early second period of play. We're tied at seven as Ohio State approaches the line of scrimmage. They've got it at their 33-yard line, first and ten. Bryan looks to the air. Drilled it a bit too hard, and Mark Hicks could not hang on. He was being covered by Kirk Larson, the weak side linebacker. Kirk Larson is the kind of guy that doesn't get a lot of credit, but he's always around the football. Great on pass coverage. Fred Fry, three of six, 42 yards of the touchdown. Second down coming up for Michigan, or for Ohio State. At the Buckeye 33, second and 10. Bobby Olive at the bottom of your screen, the wide receiver. Hicks ran into a wall. Timothy Reitinger made the stop. A 6'1", 240-pound junior out of Ferndale, Michigan. It is a third down coming up, gain of about to three yards, third and seven. Michigan State just doesn't give you much in the running game, and they just clog up that middle so well. We're talking with Norm Parker, the fine defensive coordinator for Michigan State. He says, what, we've got a uh, workman-like defense? What was the term he used? He used a lunch bucket defense. <laughs> Nothing fancy would just come at you. 0 for 2 on third down conversions are the Buckeyes. 37. Fry from the shotgun. Plenty of time. Oh, and it's dropped by Ellis. Jeff Ellis at the 40-yard line would have had a first down had he been able to motor an extra three yards from there. Maybe the fourth drop, you could argue, uh, for Ohio State here this afternoon. Well, Ellis just got a little anxious. You know, he was a slow-developing play. You're in that short zone area. You figure you're going to catch the ball. You're going to get hit right away. He run into, wanted to run with it before he had the ball. Bowman's punt taken by Miller. Miller just hard move as he slanted to the left side. Upended by a backup wide receiver for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Jay Cook will be back. Stay tuned to the second half of today's game for the announcement of the Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. Valvoline will be donating $1,000 to the general scholarship funds of the Big Ten University. The Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. First and ten, Michigan State from the Spartan 42-yard line. There are the drop passes. Well, we really got to change that Michigan State 4. It Ohio should be State Michigan one. State 4. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten. Island Hickson. Oh, he's having a fine afternoon already in the early going. I love it. In your face, Hickson says, as Dumas came up to make the tackle. Hickson stands up to him and says, yeah, but I got some yardage. I believe that drop passes uh, graphic should read Ohio State for Michigan State done, correct? Second down coming up, about five yards to go. Ohio State on defense and Michigan State from the 47 in Spartan territory. We're tied at seven, early second period. Hicks in the tail of the tandem. He gets it again. First up the middle into Buckeye territory for a first down to the 44-yard line. Sullivan made the stop on the play. Ohio State playing awfully soft on their front seven. The dominance of the Michigan State offensive line is so apparent. Ohio State has struggled defensively through much of this season, Jim Grabowski. They've lost a lot of people, as we mentioned, up front on that line. Joe Walter, their best defensive lineman, went out early. Andrew Gerd, their best inside linebacker, went down with an injury. Hickson shreds the defense again. He's close to a first down to the 35-yard line of Ohio State. It'll be second down and a yard to go. 
Mike McRae has had injury problems. John Sullivan has been slow to come around from a knee injury early in the season. Watch the block by Montgomery right there on the linebacker that opens up the hole for Hickson. They're so pleased with the way that Steve Montgomery is blocking for the tailbacks. We're going to also see Rob Roy, a sophomore out of Chicago. They like what he's done in the blocking capacity for the running game. Second and short yardage. Montgomery, the fullback, gets the call for a first down on a gain of about five yards to the 31-yard line. Here they say, Montgomery, you've done such a good job blocking. We're going to give you the football, and he gets the first down. Patrick Rogan on the stop for Ohio State, and Michigan State continues to move the ball with authority on the ground. Seven apiece, we're tied. 11.34 to go in this first half of play. And John Cooper, they've got to make some adjustments on that sideline. Andre Risen now in the ballgame. And they've been trying. We watched an Ohio State sideline huddle a moment, a few moments ago. Alan Hickson almost stepped through the tackle attempt to John Sullivan, who gets credit for the stop. Hickson on a gain of about four. I, I was looking for Hickson to cut it back inside. There was an opening back to the inside, but he didn't see it. Let's see if we could see it from here. That's number 30, Hickson, on the toss sweep. Now look at back inside. If he makes the cut on 57, the linebacker, Sullivan, may have picked up more yardage, but it's so easy from up here. Yeah, I did see you flinch, though, right away. Second down. Sore gets a block from Montgomery. Good cutback close to the first down inside the 25 to the 22-yard line of Ohio State. Mike Sullivan made the stop for the Buckeyes. Third and third down and short. About a yard and a half to go to that first down. What do you think? Maybe Mandarich's side? <laughs> yeah, well, right. Pretty soon we're going to be able to call the plays up here. <laughs> These are Michigan State fans right there. It's getting to be that time of year, isn't it? Coming up on Monday, I believe. Uh, what a guy won't do to get on camera, huh? Well, Ezor's got a first down to the 18-yard line of the Buckeyes. And boy, I tell you, Jim, they're running straight at him right now. Sreko Zizekovic made the stop. Wayne, they're doing a good job for the Spartans on the offside. You'll see Ezor start right now. Look at the hole open off to the off the offside. Good hole for the first down. The tailbacks of Michigan State do a good job of reading those plays. You know, the offensive linemen are told, Get into the face of the defender. Take him wherever way he wants to go, and the back will read it. Ryzen and Boyer to the top of your screen. They're the wide receivers. They've been ornaments for the most part today. And the three passes attempted by Michigan State this afternoon. Too much time, I believe, delay a game to be called here. Delay of game against the Spartans. This will stall the drive momentarily. You've noticed, Wayne, that the Spartans have gone into that offensive set, that tandem set, two wide receivers, one stacked behind the other. They've gone into that set several times this afternoon. It worked once to the pass to Boyer. First down. But you're noticing, too, that they're running so well in that set, too. Three penalties against Michigan State all on the offense. First down now coming up. First in about to 15. Notre Dame extends the advantage over Navy. Second period of play. I believe that game's at Annapolis, isn't that? Or is it still is. In Baltimore. Here's the kid to Hickson. Plenty of running room. Inside the 15, you're shaking your head. A late flag coming up on the play. You're shaking your head, Jim Grabowski. Did he make the wrong cut again? No, I don't think he made the wrong cut. What I'm shaking my head is, is the dominance once again of Michigan State. You'll notice the play starts left. He cuts it back right. And the right side of the offensive line is just pushing back Ohio State. And Face mask against Ohio State, Jim. Watch the play again. Hickson going left. Now he looks at the right side. Watch the holes on the right side. Ooh. Look at it. Michigan State is just driving back Ohio State. And if you're a ball carrier, you don't have to worry about making a, a big cut until the secondary. You say, God, I've got a big day this yards, afternoon. Face mask of the defense is still first There's down. the face mask right there. I believe Derek McCready got his face mask. Again, it's an inadvertent face mask penalty. But the five-yard penalty tacked out of the end of the run. It moves the football inside the 10, where Michigan State has a first down and goal to go. And look at the first downs of this ball game thus far. It's been total dominance by the Michigan State offense. Spartans in a two-tight end formation. 
Dixon, not much there that time. They clogged it well. On the bottom of the pile, Derek McCready, the defensive end, sipped it over to make the stop. And a good job by Ken Coleman, the defensive tackle. He stacked it up. McCready and Coleman there, the mid portion of that defense. Second down and goal to go. They mark the football near the seven-yard line. I should have mentioned that it wasn't first and goal, that it's first down now. That five-yard penalty did not give them a first down. First and goal is what they've got it marked as now for Michigan State at the seven-yard line of Ohio State. Blake Ezor now in the backfield as the tailback. This is Ezor. He slipped, it appeared, as he tried to make a move around the block by Montgomery off the left side. Jimmy Peel got in to make the tackle. Credit Jim Peel with great penetration. He took on the block of Montgomery in the Spartan backfield. Ezor saw it come and try to make the cut, stumbled, and Peel got the tackle. He who hesitates in this game, right? Especially down by the goal line. Yes, sir. Back outside the 10 now, just inside the 11 are the Spartans of Michigan State. We're tied at 7 apiece, 8.15 to go, first half of play. Michigan State on a second down. It's a goal-to-go -go situation. Ezor up the middle. Inside the 5 to the 4-yard line. Sullivan makes the tackle along with Pat Thomas. Gain of about 7 yards. Again, a cutback play by Ezor. You'll see number 57 in the middle of your screen there, reading the cutback, coming back into the play. 57, Sullivan, and the other linebacker, I believe that was Craig, making the tackle. Pat Thomas got a piece of him just before he entered the picture there. And it's a first down, second down. Make that a third down now for Michigan State inside the five-yard line. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up. Third down. Goal to go from the three. McAllister knocked down beautifully by Vincent Clark intended for the tight end Gusevich. McAllister was running out of real estate and had to get rid of it. You're going to see the play action, the bootleg fake to Ezor, then McAllister rolling out. Now he's looking downfield right about here. He wants to go to Gusevich, but good coverage by Ohio State. Horses McAllister back to the outside. Gusevich now turns back inside. But good reaction back to the football by number seven, Vince Clark. Good defensive play by Clark. Langlow for a 20-yard field goal. High snap. Butlin got it down, and it's blocked down the play by David Brown. They could score on this. Making the recovery, Dricko Zizakovich. Out near the 35-yard line. Was it Dumas or Brown? It Dumas, the Dumas the block, the punt. He came in from the outside. A good, clean block by Dumas. Let's take a look. You watch it on the left side, right there in your screen. Number 21, getting around the block of Montgomery, diving in there, making the block. Now, the reaction by Michigan State here, I don't think was very good back to the football. They didn't realize that ball could have been returned for a touchdown. Right there, falling the ball, but he doesn't. And Ohio State recovers in another big play by Ohio State. Dreko Zizakovic was a running back for a few yards there. We've got a break of the action. We're still tied with 7.08 left to go in this first half of play. Back after this from your local station on the Big Ten Television Network. Today's game is being brought to you in part by Ameritech. Ameritech, solutions that work. Zach Brown on the block of the field goal try by John Langlow staves off another Michigan State drive to the Ohio State doorstep. And we remain tied at 7 apiece, 7 8 left to go. First half of play, Greg Fry, a quarterback for Ohio State, out of the 34. Fry on the roll, hit by Jenkins. Jenkins wrapped him up. Spun him around and then got some help from his friends back inside the 25. The, Wayne, the faking back has to pick up a linebacker when he blitzes. You'll see the fake right there. Bill Hicks. Now, Hicks got to pick up number 51. And this is the results when you don't. That's one of those famous lookout blocks, you know. <laughs> Hicks should have turned around and said, look out. Fry, he's coming. Loss of about 10 yards, second and 20 now. Back at the 24-yard line. Hicks got 
the call up the middle. They're not going to pick up that first down on second and 20 that way. Mid portion of that defense rose to the occasion for Michigan State. In the middle there, of course, Travis Davis and Percy Snow, extremely difficult to run on at Michigan State defense. Well, the Spartan defense loves it when they get you in a minus yards on first down situation. Then they can come, and that secondary has the opportunity to pick off a pass. Third and 16, shotgun formation time. Fry with time. Puck from behind. Call it a coverage sack, but a sack nonetheless. Travis Davis made the hit. Oh, I tell you, that had to be good coverage downfield. He had all kinds of time. Yep, definitely right, Wayne. It is a coverage sack. You'll see Fry dropping back. Now look at the coverage. Basically a three-man zone, a three-deep zone, but, but you'll see an open man right in the center of your screen. Now Fry didn't see it, that's all. The punter, Jeff Bowman, muffed the snap, had to pick up, and he's angled out of play on the near side inside the 30-yard line of Ohio State, and that's where the Spartans will start their next drive offensively. Well, for Ohio State, the worst thing happened. You did not get the punt off, and Michigan State has great field position. And they start at the 25-yard line of Ohio State. 5-10 left to go in the first half. It's been dominated by Michigan State, but mistakes have cost them scores. Texas Tech leading Texas in the first period of play. Mississippi in front of LSU. Right here, seven apiece, we're tied. Highland Hickson. Hickson, good, tough move off the left flank, and he's angled out of bounds by Zach Dumas. Near the 20-yard line. Gain of four as they mark it to the 21. A couple of de good defensive plays. Number one by 46, Jim Peel, forcing Hickson to the outside. And then from the free safety spot, Mark Polini came all the way across the field to make the first hit. Second and six upcoming for Michigan State at the Ohio State 21-yard line. Andre Rising to the bottom of your screen, dangerous wide receiver. Everybody else is tight. McAllister to Hickson, hurdles the middle. Short of the first down, down to about the 17-yard line. When you make a hurdle over the middle of the line of scrimmage, you can expect to get nailed. And you'll see Hickson this time, number 30, going over. Over those blocks in the middle and watch the whack right here. Boom. No further. Hickson is going no further. Third down. About three yards to go. Hickson met at the line of scrimmage. I did not believe he got the first down. That Ohio State defense has toughened up a bit. Hickson is short of the first down. Well, Ohio State needs to get penetration, and you'll see it right here. That's number 95 coming across the line of scrimmage. That's John Kaczerski making the tackle. Kaczerski with the penetration, no gain. It is a fourth down and three, and they bring the field goal unit on once again. Well, I tell you what, you're right. They do have quite some strange people in these games, don't they? Good-looking guy there, huh? Yeah, of course, it's that time of year, Halloween coming up after uh, later on this weekend. 35-yard field goal attempt. Langlaw gets this one into the air. And through the uprights, Michigan State takes the lead with 3.41 to go. First half of play. Break in the action. A reason for celebration here at East Lansing as Michigan State moves on top for the first time today. Wayne Larravee, Jim Grabowski at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing with 3.41 to go in the first half of play, and the Spartans now leading the Buckeyes 10-7, although you take a look at the team statistics, and we're going to look at them at halftime, you're going to think the score is about 25 to nothing Michigan State. They, they have dominated here today, but mistakes have cost them. Blocked field goal, two fumbles lost. Absolutely dominated this first half. Just that control of the line of scrimmage has all been in the favor of Michigan State. John Langlow teeing it up. He is kicking into the wind, and it's a fairly stiff wind on a crisp, cool day here at Spartan Stadium. Temperature at game time was in the neighborhood of about 25 degrees. 
Hicks, number 23, Snow, number 25. They want to disguise where one is going to go. Langlow's been trying to keep it away from Snow, who leads the nation to kick off return. Kind of a line drive squib type of kick taken by one of the up backs. That is uh, Graham. Graham, a fullback, running hard across the 35-yard line. And Scotty Graham gets it out to about the 38-yard line. Steve Montgomery, a fullback for Michigan State on the special teams coverage for the Spartans. Good return by Scotty Graham. He looked like he really wanted to run the football. Take a look at this. And tell me what the score is off of this. <laughs> it's got to be about 21 to nothing, right? Absolutely. In fact, the score is 10 to 7. Michigan State leading Ohio State. Fry is 3 of 7, 42 yards at a touchdown. He's had four passes dropped here today. First and 10 Buckeyes. Oh, got a man wide open. Graham in the middle of the defense. Jeff Graham on the reception to the 43-yard line of Michigan State 19-yard gain. Wayne, the best play you can run against the zone of Michigan State is those deep curl patterns. And you got to do it on first down when they may not be expecting it. First and 10 for the Ohio State Buckeyes who try to get something going here in the final 320 of this first half of play. Matlock, the fullback, off the right side of the line. Matlock ran into a wall of defenders. Got about a yard or two on the play. Over to make the tackle, Benson Donaldson, along with Jason Ridgeway for Michigan State. Percy Snow wasn't far behind those defenders. Matlock is a big kid, 220 pounds, but he packs it on just a 5'9 frame. He is solid, built like a rock, low to the ground. He can be tough when he gets it going. Second down, gain of two on the play. Second's about eight. Ellis in motion. Fry looks to the air under some pressure now. Hicks is wide open. Hicks has a first down inside the 35 to close to the 31-yard line of Michigan State on a 10-yard pickup. Fine play by Greg Fry running out of the pocket. They're putting pressure on him, but he's reacting well. As we said, he's got all the physical tools to be a real fine quarterback in this conference. Coming up on two minutes left to be played in the first half. Michigan State leading by three, and that man trying to change things in a hurry. Greg Fry has his offense on the move. Five of nine, 71 yards, and a touchdown here today. First down just outside the Michigan State 30-yard line. Two minutes uh, timeout taken here with 2.08 to go as Fry heads over to the sidelines to visit with John Cooper and company. We'll return after these words from your local stations. Wayne Larrabee, Jim Grabowski. We're in East Lansing, the home of the Spartans. That's George Perlis, the headset on. They are resetting the clock here. We've got a hold up as Ohio State completes their timeout and their conference on the far sideline. 10 to 7. There is the. We don't have that much time left. <laughs> They're trying to reset it. A little over two minutes, I believe, left to be played. And are they going to settle on 212? Apparently they are. Michigan State leading Ohio State. Mitchell still wants more adjustment to the clock. Wait plenty of time for Ohio State to possibly take the lead. We talked about the dominance of Michigan State in this first half, but yet Ohio State is in position right now to go ahead in this ballgame. Michigan State out of first and ten just outside the Spartan 30-yard line. Say Ohio State first and ten. Ride to Hicks. Hicks on the roll, forced to the outside. And to cut it back inside, Jenkins and Reed on the stop. Reed actually forced it back inside. If you want to see how you string out a sweep, this is how you do it. Watch Michigan State stringing everything out, forcing Hicks wide. And now Snow, look at number 48. He ranges from sideline to sideline. He follows the runner all the way around, gets in on the tackle. And that's why he's a Big Ten candidate. All big set candidate, I should say. Second down, about eight yards to go for Ohio State. Bobby Olive to the near side, or bottom of your screen. Brian, off the play action. Davis, forcing him from the pocket. Brian takes it himself. And he's got a first.
first down inside the 20 near the 18 yard line. Benson Donaldson chased him out. Travis Davis really the man who flushed him out of the pocket and forced him into Wayne, a 10 yard scamper. Wayne, you're going to see a tackle and stunt to the outside. Took the tackle right in the, into the pattern of Greg Fry, but Fry does a great job of reacting to it. Forced out of the pocket, threatens the pass right now, tucks the ball under his arm, picks up some yardage. Good play by Greg Fry. Timothy Ridinger was also in the offensive backfield, flushing Fry from the pocket. First down at the 18-yard line of Michigan State. Buckeyes on the attack. Hard picks. Good move. Close to the 10-yard line. Gain of seven or eight yards. Carlos Jenkins made the tackle. Give a lot of credit on that play to the tight end, Jeff Ellis. Had a great block. Allowing Hicks to turn it upfield. Hicks, a transfer from Cal Berkeley in the spring of 1987. Sat out last year. Had 26 yards on five carries at Minnesota. Seventh play of the drive coming up for the Buckeyes. Second and three. Fry looks to the air. Again being flushed. Pass intended for the fullback Bill Matlock. Underthrown and Travis Davis supplying the heat on the quarterback. This is really once again a secondary sack, a secondary pressure. Fry looks down, he kept, comes in the pocket, he's looking downfield, he can't find anybody open. Now watch the pocket just start collapsing around him. He runs out of the pocket, now does a great job of finding someone open. Before he hits the ground, he throws the ball off. He just wants to get rid of it and protect himself. Third down and three from the Spartan 11-yard line for Ohio State. Fry. Pass under thrown. Intended on the far side for Jim Palmer, tight end. And it is a fourth down. So the Buckeyes will try to knock the ball game here as they bring on Pat O'Mara, who leads the Big Ten with a conference high of 13 field goals this season. He is 13 of 18. Going to place it down at about the 18-yard uh, line, 28-yard field goal attempt. Inside of 30, he's 5 of 5. Kicking into the wind, he nonetheless puts it through the upright, saying Ohio State has caught Michigan State with 27 seconds left to go in the first half of play. We're tied at 10. Really a fine drive by Ohio State. They're not quitting on themselves. That started on their own 38-yard line. March the ball down for that field goal. On the field goal. So, with the ball game tied, we... 27 seconds left to go. I would imagine uh, Michigan State will probably try to just kill the time here. There's not much time uh, to work. They don't have the kind of downfield passing attack that uh, would lead you to believe that they can move the ball in less than 30 seconds, depending on where they get it off the kickoff return. And I don't imagine Morrow's going, oh, Morrow's going to give them much of a chance to return it. I would think some kind of a line drive, squib type kick. And especially with the conservatism offensively for George Perlis. You know, he doesn't want to get himself in a, in a bad situation here in interception. So I got to believe they'll just run the football, go in at halftime, and say, hey, Second we did a pretty good job up front. We got to hang on to the football. That man's been under some fire in Columbus this year, but he is a fine football coach and will get this program turned around. There are too many positives to Ohio State for the Buckeyes to go through many seasons like this one. Nine play, 51-yard drive. Omoro on the 28-yard field goal. Now six of six inside the 30-yard line for Omoro. He has 14 field goals on the year. And Omoro gets the ball high into the air and coming up under it. That is Keller. Keller on the return. Keller across the 20-yard line. Penalty marker down late. Zach Dumas made an undercut move on the tackle for Ohio State. Penalty marker down late. Is correct. They'll and probably official. be going against the Spartans. And you could bet for sure now that George Perlis will just run out the clock. Clipping the call against Michigan State. So this will back it up inside the 20. Yeah, they, again, they just, Jim, don't have the pass scheme to dig themselves out of a hole. 
with uh, less than 24 seconds to go, even though they have, what, three timeouts remaining. They just don't have that kind of a passing game. We have and, and too much green to cover in 24 they still seconds. First down. Exactly. If they had a big return out near the midfield marker, that's a different story. Then you try to move into field goal range. But at this stage, I imagine they'll try to kill the clock and head off the field knowing they dominated the first half and find themselves uh, maybe a bit per perplexed. They're tied at 10 apiece despite the dominance they've held here this afternoon. Michigan State on what may be the final play of this first half. From inside their 10-yard line. Blake Ezor protecting the football, angles it out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Carry. Jim Peel made the stop for the Buckeyes of Ohio State as time winds down, heading to the final 10 seconds of the first half. So at the end of one half complete, you Michigan notice? State and Ohio State head to the locker rooms, tied at 10 apiece. And there's George Perlis and his Spartans. They have dominated, but they do not lead at halftime. John Cooper and company, they've been resilient. They've hung in. We'll return with our halftime activities Ladies coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have with us today members of one of the finest teams in Spartan football history. Spartans, that team included Kirk Gibson now the Los Angeles Dodgers and they tied Michigan for the Big Ten championship could not go to the Rose Bowl due to collegiate probation Daryl Rogers was their head coach Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski halftime and by Mr. Goodrich no one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodrich no one Opening kickoff of the second half, and Carlos Snow breaks it across the 35 to the 40-yard line, and he's got yardage out across the 40 to the 41. Mike Iquinetto made a, what might be construed as a touchdown-saving tackle on a 30-yard return, and Ohio State in good field position to start the second half may have a little momentum here. It looked like Michigan State had that pretty good coverage on there, but all of a sudden a little crease, and that's all Carlos Snow needs. First and 10 for Michigan State from the 41-yard line. Carlos Snow, the tail of the tandem of the I formation. Matlock is the fullback. Brett Fry has lots of room on his own. Fry got about five and took one heck of a hit. Matt Vanderbeek closed quickly for Michigan State. Boy, they pursued very well as a defense, don't they? When Fry got to the outside, it looked like he had some room to run. But again, it was the pursuit of Michigan State. You look at the opening right here. Now watch the hit on Fry. Boom. Oof. That's Percy Snow and Vanderbeek on that tackle. He was smart enough to hit the ground early. Yes. Though. Second and five for the Buckeyes. Fry on a roll the other side. Matlock, good move, lost the handle on it. Up for grab. And I believe the Buckeyes retain possession. Luckily for Ohio State, that ball bounced right back into the hands of Matlock. It was a good move, spinning off the tackler, but he got to hang on to the football. And they're about two, three yards short of that first down, Jim. We're tied at 10, just underway, third period from Spartan Stadium. Let's get another look at that play. Now watch the move by Matlock as he spins off the tackle. Boom. But he just doesn't hang on the football. Ooh, I'd say it. Davis had a shot at it. Had an opportunity, but it went right back into the hands of Matlock. Third down, about three yards to go. Fry, first down and more. Fabiano to the Michigan State 36. Lanier Payton made the stop. 16-yard gain. Looks like Ohio State is going to the pass. Now watch the invert zone. Safety comes up, opening right there in the middle. Great pass by Fry, right on the numbers on number eight of Bobby Olive. Good pass, good reception for Ohio State. Ohio State wide receiver Bobby Otto, former walk-on. He's just a sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. He's going to be a good one. He's got a tight end here. And Jeff Ellis on the left side of the, your, that offensive line near the top of your screen is going to be good also. Snow into the secondary. Carlos Snow for a first down. 12-yard gain. First and 10. Good job by Ohio State sealing the middle, pulling the guard. He kicks out on the cornerback. Good hole for Carlos Snow. First down. 
Five carries here today, 29 yards. I've got a feeling he's going to see the ball a lot more here in the second half. Ohio State on the drive. They drove the ball well late in the second period to set up the field goal to tie the game. They're on the move right now. Matlock, the fullback, has a hole up the middle. Inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Reitinger is the tackle for Michigan State. Second down coming up, about three yards to go. Gain of seven on that play. In the first half, it was the Spartans who dominated the line of scrimmage. In this first series for Ohio State, their offensive line is doing the controlling. Early third period of play. This is the first offensive possession for Ohio State in the second half. scrimmage maybe a yard in the play Carlos Jenkins the outside linebacker who's having an excellent sophomore season made the stop Carlos Jenkins a good athlete he got penetration made the tackle football just inside the 17 yard line third down coming up third down and about uh, two yards to go double tights now they pull in Jay Cook, wide receiver on the wing, right side, bottom of your screen. He goes in motion. Drive off the play action. Gets it away to Ellis. And the tight end's got a first and goal inside the 10 near the 8-yard line. Jeff Ellis on the reception, 8-yard gain to a first down. Derek Reed and Lanier Payton on the tackle for Michigan State. Good play call by Ohio State. They send Jay Cook in motion to the left side. He goes on a deep corner route. They delay the tight end on an out move, and Greg Fry found him. Seventh play of the drive for Ohio State with 11.24 to go in the third. We're tied at 10. Fry looks to the air. Quick slant over the middle, and it's incomplete. I believe that ball was tipped in the line. It may have been Percy Snow who did a little tip job there, there on the ball. Derek Reed had the coverage downfield. And the pass incomplete. Second down and goal to go just outside the eight-yard line. Ohio State got the defense they expected. An invert zone that leaves a wide man, Bobby Olive, one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback. The ball just wasn't there. Graham to the top of your screen, Edwards to the bottom. There are the wide receivers. High formation backfield. Hicks now the tail of the panel behind Matlock. The fake to Matlock. Fry on the roll. Fry's the option at the hips, and it's intercepted on the play by Larson, and Michigan State takes over. athletic move by Kurt Larson. We said earlier that he's around the football. He doesn't get a lot of credit, but he's had three interceptions, a couple fumble recoveries. Let's watch the play by Greg Fry. It's an option. Now he takes it inside. Now once he makes that decision, he should forget about it. He should make the pitch. But watch Larson coming into the picture. Good athletic move by Larson hanging on to the football. Bad decision by Greg Fry. Greg Again. Fry trying to pitch back, so it's not really a pass. And Larson stepped in and intercepted. First and ten. Hickson broke a couple of tackles, has a first down. Out near the 20-yard line at the 19. 11-yard gain to a first down for Michigan State. We should clarify that, Wayne. You're right. It's not an interception. That's a fumble recovery. Sure. That's a fumble recovery because he was pitching back. He intercepted the lateral, so to speak, is what it would be. If he was tossing it forward, but he was beyond the line of scrimmage anyway. Island Hickson. Good move by Hickson. I believe that was Polini who made a, a stop for Ohio State that time. Michigan gonna, State trying to turn that turnover around and put into a, a long drive. We're going to see a lot of Highland Hicks in number 30 over the next couple of years. He's an exciting runner, just a young sophomore. As I mentioned, sat out last year. 
had a 106-yard rushing day against Northwestern a few weeks ago. Second down. Dixon at the hole once again, but this time the man who got a piece of him on an ankle grab was Mike Sullivan. Did have enough uh, for the first down, and just about the 30-yard line, across the 29. It's a first and 10 now for Michigan State. Wayne, in first down situations, Michigan State has run the ball 21 times, 20 times, thrown only once. Biggest day of the season in, in the collegiate career thus far of Highland Dixon, 107 yards rushing. First and 10 near the 30. Dixon again, and if it works, keep going to it till they stop it. That time it was John Sullivan, I believe, who got a piece of him on the tackle. So it'll be a second down. Hickson got another three yards or so on the play, second and seven, and the band is <laughs> playing the chairs, so to speak. Yeah, those drummers, they can play their tunes anything. Yeah. <laughs> they can warm up on anything, you know. They're like the millions. They can adapt to the situation, whatever they have. Just two sticks is all they need. You get a look at what Michigan State is doing on first down. McAllister on second down looking to the air. Overshot Risen, who appeared to be open underneath the coverage of Zach Dumas on the near side across the midfield marker. Third down coming up for Michigan State. Andre Risen was open, ball just overthrown. You can see Bobby McAllister looking to the sideline, talking to Risen now, saying, hey, Risen said, I was open, just got to get me the football. And Bobby says, I know, I know, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it, yep. 9-11 left to go, third period of play. Michigan State, four of eight on third down conversions. They average about three yards to go on third down. They face a third down and seven. McAllister, being blitzed. This is where he's dangerous. Taken down on the play by combination of Lance Price with help from John Kaczurski. Kaczurski, I should say, the principal on there. Price came in a little bit later. Most quarterbacks would have ended up with a sack on this play because Ohio State came with the blitz from the outside. That's broken, but a good athletic move by Bobby McAllister. Stepped back up into the pocket, starts running with the football, doesn't quite make the first down. Fourth down and about a yard and a half to go, so he got five yards, a little bit more than five yards on that scamper, but not enough for the first down that you mentioned. Josh Butler down in punt formation. Bobby Olive in single safety for Ohio State. Buckman gets off a line drive kick that caroms out of bounds near the 25-yard line, and Ohio State will start from there. 38-yard punt, but no return. Yep, it's cool and crisp here at East Lansing. We'll return after these words from your local stations. Hey, it's college football. 8.24 to go in the third. Michigan State and Ohio State are tied. First down for the Buckeyes near their 25-yard line. on his own nine yards out across the 30 to the 34 yard line Ryan snow and ridgeway snow. recovered to make the stop well like we said it's getting close to that time of year again halloween coming up on monday and believe me they've got a head start here in this crowd when i like what ohio state is doing in the second half they're coming on first down throwing the football at least attempting to throw the football second down short yarded situation bart star used to go uh, deep on this play let's see what greg Fry drives Carlos Snow, not a bad call at all. He's got the first down. First down across the 35, out near the 37. Gain of about three yards. Vanderbeek on the tackle for Michigan State with some help from his friends coming in from the linebacking core. Percy Snow. Snow had 16 tackles at Michigan. It's seven solo tackles last week against Illinois. Saw a good surge by the offensive line of Ohio State on that last play. Matlock and Snow, the backfield tandem for Ohio State. First down near the 37, 38 yard line. Fry under some pressure, scrambles again. Across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Got a little bit more than five yards. Matt Vanderbilt made the stop for Michigan State. When you have mobile quarterback, as obviously Fry is, and of course we know McAllister can run, that's one of his strengths. There you get a look at the rushing uh, statistic for Greg Fry today. You have to uh, tailor your pass rush to it. 
Well, Michigan State is really dropping back their linebackers in deep coverage. Fry cannot find a receiver open, so very alertly he's tucking the ball under his arm. Of course, your pass rush has to be a little bit more cautious because you have to uh, fill lanes. You have to contain second down for Ohio State. Snow, big yardage off the left side. Fumble the football. Spartans recover. Derek Green out of recovery. Second turnover of the game for Ohio State. Wayne, once again, Ohio State has come off the football, their offensive line. You'll see a good hole on the left side of your screen right there. Good hole. Now, once Carlos Snow breaks in the open, he's usually dangerous, but the offside gets him. The helmet right on the football, jars the ball loose, and guess who? Kurt Larson is around the football. Derek Reed got the, inter uh, the fumble recovered, but you saw Kurt Larson once again around the ball. Second turnover of this third period for Ohio State. And they've been costly. 6.34 to go. McAllister and company are tied with Ohio State at 10. At Jettison Fieldhouse. We're in East Lansing today. And coming up next week, the Big Ten Game of the Week will be at Champaign, Illinois. Your old stomping grounds, Jim Grabowski, as the Hoosiers of Indiana take on the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Two teams that, uh, well, they're really looking for bowl action. Both those teams, they've got a chance. Michigan State certainly has a chance at a ball game if they can win the rest of their contest. Right now, they're tied with Ohio State at 10-10, 6.34 to go, third period of play. Michigan State, first and 10. McAllister on the roll, rising. His first catch of the day to the Ohio State 36-yard line, 25 yards and a first down. Wayne, he does a fine job of driving off the defender. In this case, it was Zach Dumas. Let's take a look. Little play action right there. Bobby McAllister rolling out. He's looking to Ryzen all the way. Now, Ryzen has just driven off the defender. Number 21, Dumas, turns back to the football. It's there. Good reception. Think the life of the quarterback is easy? Watch this. Ooh. <laughs> that was uh, Big John Sullivan. First and 10, 36-yard line of Ohio State for the Spartans. Island Hicks in change of direction. Jumped off a couple of defenders, still on his feet. Fine run by Hickson. It seems like, Jim Grabowski, you get the feeling this guy is growing with each carry. Wayne, he stopped his forward momentum on the cut. He got hit as he made, made that stop of his momentum, but yet he could, was able to shake off that tackler and take it to the outside. A very strong young man there. Island Hickson, 5'10", 214, a sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. Second down, a gain of about seven on that play, second to three. Hickson again, very close to the first down before being turned back. Brian Bettio was among the last to arrive on the scene. The principal defender was Ken Coleman in the middle of the Ohio State line. I believe the uh, Spartans are just short of the first down outside the 26, and the officials want to make sure they're going to call for the measurement. Notre Dame continues to lead Navy in the third period of play. LSU on top of Mississippi as they come to halftime down south. Texas Tech leading Texas, but the Longhorns charging back into that one. Clemson maintaining a three-point edge over Wake Forest in the second. And Miami out in front of East Carolina. Purdue, Wisconsin are scoreless early in that one. It's underway. And Michigan and Northwestern getting underway in Evanston. Oh, there we go. Say, they usually do that with beach balls in most ballparks, and uh, that's a human being they're doing that with. <laughs> I guess that's one way to get back to your seat. Second down, a little less than a yard to go for Michigan State. Just outside the Buckeye 26. Hicks in the tail of the tandem. He's been the star on the ground for Michigan State today. Marino in motion. Hickson's got a first down inside the 25. Down to the 23-yard line. Boy, Blake is going to have a tough time getting back into the lineup here, isn't he? Well, we're waiting. Michigan State offensive people have been waiting for this Highland Hickson to mature, and he's certainly done that today. Watch a big hole right on the right side there. Great down block by the tackle, Robbins. Good kick out by the tight end, Gusevich. And you're into the secondary on a certain third and short situation. 
That's great blocking. First down for Michigan State. McAllister's completed two first down passes, both for 25 yards, one to Boyer and one to Rising. Keeps it on the ground, goes to the hot hand. Montgomery, <laughs> he bumped into Montgomery, the fullback who was trying to set up a block, and Hickson goes down a few yards later. Well, John Sullivan, the middle linebacker, the inside linebacker of Ohio State, read the play well. He came into the backfield to take on the block of Montgomery. Hickson ran up the back, but again, his good balance kept his feet. He picked up some good yardage. During the later stages of this, the third period of play, Hickson having quite a day. Sixth play of this particular drive coming up. We've got 4.45 to go in the third. We're still tied at 10. Second down for Michigan State. Hickson gets the call again. Changes direction. Nearly broke into the end zone. Zach Dumas on a touchdown saving tackle near the five-yard line of Ohio State. 12-yard gain. Hickson has a great sense for where the hole is. Again, starting on the right side. Watch a cut back to the left. He sees the hole here. He shoots through it. Now watch the leg drive after he gets into the secondary. He gets hit by Dumas, keeps those legs pumping, takes two more Ohio State guys to bring him down. It is first and goal for Michigan State. Football at the four-yard line of the Buckeyes. Then a piece were tied in the third. Hickson. Angled out on the near side by Orlando Craig. Once again, they go to Hickson, designed to go off a tackle. He bumps it out to the outside, and right at this point, I think he's going to score. But look at the tackle by Orlando Craig. Prevents him from going into the end zone. At Good. the one-yard line, it's a second and goal for the Spartans, looking to take the lead here in this third period. Hickson, in the middle of the line once again. I believe that was John Sullivan, the inside linebacker, coming over the top that really made the hit that foiled the play. Take it on a look at it. He might have been juggling the ball a bit here. Let's see if it was a clean exchange. Good surge here by Ohio State, no. preventing Dixon from getting into the end zone. Just no place to go. Dixon uh, almost fumbled that, Jim. He got the, uh, he got the handoff a little bit low. Did well to hold on to it. No gain on the play. Third and goal for the Spartans at the Buckeye one. The canister. This is easy. Touchdown. completely fooled Ohio State. They thought sure that Hickson was going to get the football. Now watch the fake here. All the white jerseys think Hickson has the ball, and he can walk out into the end zone. Holding the ball high, saying, no one's around me. You could do the dance in the end zone. Langlow for the point after. Josh Butler on the hold. Langlow gets it high into the air through the uprights and Michigan State with 3.29 to go in this third period of play. Leaves Ohio State by 7. We'll return after these words from your local stations. This is the MSU Trivia Quiz sponsored by the Lansing Automakers Credit Union. The largest crowd ever to see a game at Spartan Stadium was 80,383 fans. Who was the opponent for that opening game in 1975? Send your answer to MSU Trivia, P.O. Box 11037, Lansing, Michigan, 48901 by next Friday. You could win a football signed by Coach Furlick, a copy of the Spartan Trivia game, and a $50 savings bond from the Lansing Automakers Credit Union and TV4. Stay tuned to the end of today's game when Jim and I will be naming the Budweiser player of the game. And obviously, I don't think there's any question right now if things stay the way they are. Highland Hicks and that young sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale will get the award. Let's look at that touchdown run by Bobby McAllister one more time. Now watch the fake. See how it fooled the whole Ohio State defense. Everybody is converging on Hickson right now. 
and he carried out the fake very well himself. Very well. Over the top. Bobby McAllister just walks into the end zone. Now, I may argue with you a little bit yet about the player of the game, Wayne. You talk about Highland Hicks, and he's had a great game, but the offensive line, to me, has been the dominating All right. factor. Okay, we'll keep an eye on both. I don't think you'd go wrong either way. How's that for a back pedal? <laughs> Hicks at the four, juggled for a moment. Mark Hicks out to the 20-yard line and no farther. Over to make the coverage, Dixon Edwards and Freddie Wilson. So it'll be a first and 10 for the Buckeyes, who now trail by seven with 3.23 left to go. Third period. Wayne, let's see if Ohio State continues with their pattern in the second half of throwing or attempting to throw on first down. Buckeyes adjust on personnel. Bobby Olive heading out to the far side, a wide receiver. He's the only wide receiver in the game. First and ten. This is Hicks. Good pursuit by that fired up Michigan State defense. He got maybe two yards out of that. Over to make the play, Kurt Larson on the outside linebacking post. Ohio State came with a two tight end formation. Michigan State countered with an eight-man front. Gain of a yard, second down and nine at the 21-yard line of the Buckeyes in their own territory. Late in the third period. Edwards to the top of your screen. Griffin to the bottom. Fry looks to throw. Receiver dropped it as a penalty marker flies. Oh, man, I'm telling you, Bill Matlock got hit in the numbers and couldn't hang on. There was a penalty marker down, though, near the offensive line. And, again, you suspect holding when you see that flag. Well, legal push against uh, Ohio State. Same result. You'll see the surge of the defensive line attacking the offensive line in a stunt. By Michigan State, you saw it's number 75 come out on the stunt. That's Travis Davis. But the ball got off right in the hands of Bill Matlock. But as he turned, I think he lost the football, and it was upon him before he knew it. Illegal use of hands on the offense. 10-yard foul, still second down. It'll be second down and 19 when they get everything positioned correctly. And the Spartan fans are really getting into it now. You've heard of the wave. It looks like this is the Michigan State jump. Everybody in the stands just jumping up and down. Trying to keep warm, Jimmy. It's about 30 degrees out here today. Nothing like having your home, the home team have a lead. If I start feeling a little shaky up here in the press box, Wayne, I may be getting out of here. That's right. Second half possessions for Ohio State. They have struggled at times in this ball game. The football recovered by the Spartans. Chris Willard's on the recovery. Let's take a look at it going to be a handoff to number 23, Hicks. Looked like the ball was right there, right into the stomach. Hicks just didn't hang on to it. And there's number 99, Willard, right there to pounce on it. His brother Steve played at Notre Dame, and Chris Willard's a junior out of Bay City, Michigan, gives the Spartans possession first and goal at the Ohio State 8-yard line. A chance to break this game open. If you don't think there's any hitting out there, that last play, if you could hear it, you could heal and hear the pads popping. Three minutes, six seconds to go in the third. Michigan State leading 17 to 10, and the Spartans on a second down and goal to go at the Buckeye 5. How the complexion of the game changes at the start of this first half. Ohio State looked like they were going in for a score, but it was a fumble that turned the ball over to Michigan State. Hicks 
Hutchins. Cuts it back inside the five, down to the three-yard line. Again, good pursuit by the Ohio State goal line defense. Buckeyes got good pursuit that time. Coming from the uh, secondary, Mark Bellini at safety. Highland Hickson has great balance. You see the block out in front, number 27, Roy. Hickson turning it back inside. And he's so powerful. He looks like he should be going down, but he picks up three or four or more yards. That's number Seems 30. favoring his right leg as he limps off. Blake Ezor replaces him in the offensive backfield. Roy is the fullback. Third and goal from the three. Ezor. Touchdown. But a flag on the play. Penalty marker down. Clip against the Spartans. Oh, how those mistakes kill you. Down to the goal line, you're right, Jim. Boy, I tell you, holding and clipping down to the goal line. You know, I've heard of some officials really argue about a play. You know, if it's a defensive penalty, it's half the distance to the goal. If it's an offensive penalty, it's the full amount. John Nealon. John didn't have his microphone activated. Maybe now. Here we go. On the offense, still third down. Flipping on the offense, still a third down. I don't know if we can pick it up or not, Jim. Well, this is a toss to number 26. Blake Ezer threatens the outside. Now makes a good cut back inside. He sees the goal line. He's going for it. And he gets in, but we cannot pick up the clip. But it was Andre Risen coming in from his slit end position that had the clip. Football now back near the 18 yard line. Third down. Ezor running hard, but he had a lot of yardage to get. And the crowd didn't like the call at all. So it is a fourth down now. And the field goal unit comes on. John Langlow. Well, you know, George Perlis isn't the biggest gambler in football, that's for sure. But he feels that if he can get a field goal on board, he's in control of this football game. Langlow trying a 32-yard field goal attempt. Five of seven from this distance. John Nealon threw the flag. Field goal is good. It's a dead ball foul, Wayne. Personal, Personal foul, foul against Ohio State, and it'll be penalized on the kickoff. And we'll be back for that kickoff. George Perlis and company extend the advantage to 10 points as we near the final stages of the third quarter. Quarter, Columbia, 24. Travel arranged through Northwest, serving more than 200 cities on three continents. Whether traveling to Europe or the Pacific, look to us, Northwest. George Perlis on the Michigan State sidelines. Flipping penalty cost Michigan State a touchdown. They settle for a field goal and a 10-point lead at 20 to 10 with 131 left to go. John Langlow getting set to restart the ball game. We're third period of play here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Snow on the near side, Hicks on the far side at twin safeties. Snow 25 leads the nation. Kickoff returns. From the 50 due to the uh, post possession foul. foul. And the kick sails through the end zone. It'll be a first and 10 from the 20. The personal foul against Ohio State on the field goal by Langlow. That penalty is post play and they assess it on the kickoff. So instead of kicking from the 35, they move it up to the 50-yard line. And Langlow pokes it through the end zone, and no return. So Ohio State starts from the 21st and 10. While that, why that penalty was important is because it kept it out of the hands of Carlos Snow. Buckeyes. First down. Buckeyes on the first and 10. Michigan State closed very well on the 
ball. John Miller, the All-Big Ten safety, along with Percy Snow. You see those guys on the All-Big Ten teams this year, no question about that. And it looks like Carlos Snow is down. Yep, shaking up. Again, you hope it's nothing serious. He, uh, he's been in and out of the lineup today. He came into the ball game. The Ohio State people told us he was about as healthy as he's been all season. He's had some tough, nagging injuries that have cut his production. Came into the game leading the team at 394 yards rushing. The injury after the LSU game, he missed the Illinois contest. At 76 yards last week at Minnesota. Wayne, I think he's going to be fine. He just had the wind knock, got him. It was the helmet of Percy Snow that got him right in the stomach, knocked the wind on him. He's up on the sidelines now. He's going to be fine, and I would expect that he'll be back in the ballgame. Game of two on the play. Second down and eight yards to go, Ohio State. They put the two wide receivers out to the short side of the field. Top of your screen. Donaldson made the stop. You'll see the play action by Greg Fry. Little draw fake to James Fry. Now he's looking downfield to Edwards on a corner route in the seam of the zone. You'll see that he's in front of the, the deep man, Donaldson, in back of Kurt Larson. Good throw by Greg Fry into the hands of Edwards. First and 10 out at the 40-yard line. Buckeyes in their own territory. They trail by 10. Final oh, minute of play, third period. Fry off the play action. For about six yards. Fry hauled down from behind by Chris Willerts. Fry carries. Willard's having an active second half here. He's recovered a fumble, makes a tackle to the quarterback. Second down coming up. Michigan State good at putting good pressure on Greg Fry, but the rush routes are taking him to the outside. Yep. Fry sees the seam in the middle and takes it under his arm and picks up good yardage. Fry's had a pretty good day rushing the ball. Inside Michigan State territory to the 43-yard line. Kurt Larson made the stop on the play. 11-yard gain to a first down. Let's watch it again. It's Bears watching again. Little counter step by Bryant. Good stutter right here. Looking for the hole. Sets up the block. Cuts through that hole there. Now watch the move here. Good spin. Boom. Right around there. Almost maintains his balance, but an excellent run by James Bryant. Frederick Wilson, the man he spun around and then was put away. And the third period has come to a close. Take a look at what happened in the third period of these two teams. Ohio State struggled with turnovers. Michigan State very efficient on their three drives in the third period of play. Final 15 minutes coming up. Michigan State owns a 10-point lead. We'll return after this from your local station. The Valvoline Big Ten Player of the Week is Northwestern running back Byron Sanders. He rushed for 181 yards and 32 carries, including a 65-yard run to lead the Wildcats to their first win of the season, a 35-14 victory at the expense of Wisconsin. The Valvoline Big Ten Player of the Week, Northwestern running back Byron Sanders. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski, Spartan Stadium at East Lansing, Michigan on a clear, crisp, cool day. Ohio State battles Michigan State. The Buckeyes on offense trailing by 10 points as we start the fourth period of play. James Bryant, the tail of the tandem. On the reverse, Graham looks to throw. Pass fell short of the mark. Graham was taken down, I'll tell you. Miller came up to make a hit on that play in the backfield. It really uh, it just threw, a, threw the play into chaos, so to speak. Watch this. Graham, number 84, coming on the reverse. But Michigan State defense, especially Derek Reed, didn't buy the reverse fake. Ball 
poorly thrown, but, you know, Graham's a wide receiver, not a quarterback. I think he panicked when he saw 44 coming at him. He never really set himself to make that throw. Second and 10. 43-yard line of Michigan State. Shotgun for Fry. Good protection. Big Jeff Ellis over the middle is close to the first down. Near the 34-yard line. We're going to take a look at the zone defense of Michigan State. You'll see here it's a two-deep zone. Two safeties back deep, five underneath. Now watch the delay. You'll see on the right side of your screen is Ellis on a delay. Roll back into the inside in the middle of the, of the field. Gets the reception close to the first down. And a personal foul call against Ohio State. Dead ball foul. Boy, those are mistakes the Buckeyes can ill afford. They have a dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. It'll be third down. When they look like they're moving the football, I'm speaking of Ohio State, they have a miscue that really hurts them. They have really self-destructed in the second half. There are the statistics through three periods. Michigan State looks like they're heading toward a 300-day rushing the ball. Turnovers, all of the Ohio State turnovers came in that third period. That's great. Penalties also have hurt Michigan State. And you don't like to see a personal foul penalty wipe out a big play like they just had. Now it's third down and long. Third and 16. Fry looking downfield plenty of time. Bobby Olive almost caught it on the tip drill. Let's play some volleyball. Greg Fry out of the shotgun, looking over the center of the field. He's going to Matlock, rifles the football over the head, tipped by Matlock. Here's another tip. That's Olive going for the football, but it falls incomplete. Ohio State must punt. I believe it also went off the shoulder pad of Carlos Jenkins. Bowman's punt. Karam's inside the Michigan State 20. Buckeyes have it well covered, and they down it near the 13-yard line. First and 10 for Michigan State at about the 12-yard line. In Spartan territory, when we return, 14.04 to go, fourth period of play. If there's one good thing about the end of summer, it's the red-hot savings. important game in not only the Big Ten race, but also in the race for a bowl game. That's our offering next week. George Perlis has turned things around here at Michigan State. Rose Bowl last year, and he's turning things around for the 0-4-1 start this year. First and 10 for his offense at the Michigan State 12-yard line. Hicks him back in the game. Has yardage out across the 15 to about the 18-yard line. Gain of six yards. Bellini made the tackle. You know you're in trouble, Wayne, if your secondary has to come up and make all the tackles. Once again, good hole for Hickson. And number 48, coming out of the free safety spot, has to come up and make the tackle. Mark Bellini on the stop, second down. Now about four yards to go, Michigan State. Hickson on a slant once again. John Sullivan, he battles through Sullivan's tackle, and then it's brought down by Sullivan with help from Zach Dumas, and it looks like he's got a first down. Boy, he's an extremely tough running back. When he gets hit, he hardly ever goes down on the first, first blow. A great combination when you have the speed, quickness of a Hickson, but yet the strength to break those tackles. You've got a ball carrier. Hickson, a big day. 161 yards and a touchdown. Football near the 23-yard line, Michigan State Territory. Hickson's the workhorse today. Out close to the 25, gain of two. They're starting to look for that number 30 now in the Wait, defense. He's getting a little tired. Time to take him out. And now we see Blake Ezor coming into the lineup. He's going to replace Hickson. Hickson has had a lot of work this afternoon. First 
can make that a second down now and about eight yards to go. A little bit more than eight. Blake Ezor back into the game. He started for Open Michigan State. McAllister has the option to run on this, and that's exactly what he does. Sreko Zizakovic made the tackle. McAllister on that play has the option on the read to either throw a pass if he sees something or just tuck it under and run. That time, I don't think he looked downfield very much at all. I think he just ran it all the way. No way. From the snap, he said, I'm running the football. He only threatened to look downfield. I don't even think Ryzen thought he was going to throw the football. He got into the block right away. Tremendous disparity in rushing. Third and two. Ezor going for the first down. He got it and more. Uh, what a nice block out in front by Rob Roy. He just drove Mark Polini out of the play. We talked about the blocking ability of the fullback. If you're going to be an I formation team, you've got to block, have a fullback and block. Now watch the block by number 27. That's Rob Roy. 48, Polino coming to pictures right here. Watch the block. Boom! And Ezor makes a good cut off the block of Rob Roy. Blake Ezor having a pretty good day today as far as yardage is concerned. 101 yards. Ezor finding his way into a crowd off the right side. Got barely a yard at that point. Over to make the tackle, Sreko Zizakovic once again on that defensive line for Ohio State. Coming up at 11 minutes left to go in the game. Michigan State leading by 10, and all the Spartans want to do is a long time consuming drive. Oh, now we start the wave. We had the bounce before, now it's, well, it's a half hearted wave. Oh, well, now they're getting into it. Making some noise here in East Lansing. Seven play of this drive coming up, and they're only at the 38 yard line. Second down. Tell you what, he is not big, but he's tough. He ran into a couple of defenders. Patrick Rogan was there, along with uh, Zach Dumas. Michigan State just does a great job with those cutback plays to the tailback. You start it one direction, cut it back, and that offside blocking has been great this afternoon. Third down for Michigan State, about three yards to go. Near the Spartan 44. There's your wave, Jim Grabowski. I see better waves. McAllister stopped short of the first down. Matter of fact, got back to the line of scrimmage and not much farther. It is a fourth down, and the punting unit comes out. Once again, Wayne, that was run all the way by McAllister. He had no intention of throwing the football. Bobby Allen dropping back deep to receive this punt from that man on the left side of your screen, Josh Butlin, averaging 42 yards per kick. today's game when Jim and I will be naming the Budweiser player of the game and Jim uh, I'm beginning to believe now that Blake Ezor is over 100 yards rushing that you're right that offensive line deserves an awful lot of the credit you get two backs over 100 yards that's saying something about the blocking up front there's no doubt that the two backs have done a fine job both Hicks and Ezor are fine runners in this Big Ten conference but that offensive line to me has just been dominant Buckeyes on a first and ten at their nine yard line line and did well to avoid a safety number one and still nonetheless picked up two yards Travis Davis finally got back to make the tackle you'll see Greg Fry dropping back in the pocket now if he can find a receiver open on timing right now step throw but he can't find any buddy now the pocket starts breaking down he feels it he runs out of the pocket makes a good move right here on Willard good cutback 
picks up a couple yards when it would, could have been a safety. Nine carries, 27 yards for Fry in the rushing department. Second and eight, Ohio State. Fry, Matlock. Oh, you can hear the pads that time as John Miller, the all Big Ten strong safety, came up to meet him and deny him a first down. Third down for Ohio State across the 15-yard line at the 17. Third down, about a yard and a half to go. Well, that was a good tackle by Miller. He's just 190 pounds. He took on Bill Matlock, 5'9", 220 pounds, prevented him from getting that first down. Third down, about two yards to go now for Ohio State. Good play action by Ohio State, faking the sweep. Then Fry rolling out, freezes the linebackers one-on-one -on -one in, in the secondary. Good throw to Olive. First down for Ohio State. Buckeyes are trailing by 10. First down at the 31. They got a first and 10 of the 31-yard line, Ohio State territory. Fry on the Ginga Hicks to the outside. Didn't get much maybe two yards to the 33-yard line. Ohio State had the outside contained. Larson was there. Michigan State had the outside contained, I should say. Gain of two, second and eight. You just don't run consistently on this Michigan State football team. If I were Ohio State, I'd put the ball in the air all the time. Second down for the Buckeyes single back offense here. Now they move Metlock back into the offensive backfield. Fry has protection initially. Ellis is the release man over the middle, and he is close to the first down near the 42-yard line. Jenkins made the stop. Also there, Percy Snow, the all-Big Ten middle linebacker. First and 10 for Ohio State. They knows the football just across the 41-yard line. Had to be an audible, Wayne. Greg Fry saw something he didn't like. Called the audible, found Ellis over, up, open over the middle. Fry came in as the number three yardage passer in the Big Ten, but a conference high nine interceptions this year. Just a sophomore out of Cincinnati. Metlash in motion. Fry on target once again to Ellis. Out near the midfield marker on a gain of about seven or eight yards. Larson on the near side. You're going to see him continue to go to the tight end of the back. Michigan State dropping deep into their zones. Ohio State has to throw underneath. Ellis, five catches, 54 yards. Came into the day with 20 catches to lead Ohio State. In receptions. Second down, top three. Second and three. Time becoming a factor now. 6.25. Left to go. Ellis in motion. Right. Over the middle, wide open. Hicks broke a couple of tackles down to the 42-yard line of Michigan State. Percy Snow finally brought him down. You'll see the coverage by Michigan State. Deep drop, two deep zones, five guys underneath. They're going to give you the short stuff. They figure if you're going to march it down the field, you're going to eat up a lot of the time, and you may make the mistake, which Ohio State certainly has done in this second half. First and ten in Spartan territory. Fry again looking downfield. Going deep. Leap and grab made out of play by Jeff Graham. What a sensational catch, but he was well out of bounds. Jeff Graham, a sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio. Let's take a look at the catch. It bears watching again. As you said, Wayne, great one-handed grab, but... Two yards out of bounds. For Ohio State's sake, too bad that dotted line there. The right side of the picture wasn't the sideline. Of course, I think the coverage would have been a little tighter if it was, right? I'll tell you, Greg Fry has been doing a great job of avoiding the rush. Ninth play of this Ohio State drive. Second and ten. One of the 
reasons this opened up is Michigan State came with the blitz, the inside linebacker blitz. Put you one-on-one -on -one in the secondary. You'll see Olive on the deep turn-in, wide open, and Fry got it to him. 5.54 to go in the game. Michigan State leading 20-10, Ohio State on the drive. That's a Spartan 25. chased him down. This has been the story all afternoon. Greg Fry under pressure, but he has the ability to make some tacklers miss, and he turns losses into small gains. That time, Willard's cut him down short of the line of scrimmage. Second Loss of two, 12. second and 12. 27-yard line, Spartan territory. of the football by Graham, and it's a first down, and Ohio State is threatening. Lanier Payton was right there on the tackle, 22-yard gain, first and goal, Buckeyes. Fry to the corner of the end zone, intercepted on the play. Derek Reed. second-half turnovers have cost Ohio State three in the third period alone and then one here in the fourth period of the end zone. A fine interception by Derek Reed on a pass into the corner of the end zone. And that man, John Cooper, he's suffering this year. No question about that. It's been a tough season for the coach. George Perlis getting his program turned around after an 0-4 and 1 start. They've won two in a row and hoping to make a three. First and ten for the Spartans from the 20. Island Hickson to the outside, nowhere to go. Boy, they came in waves to the Buckeyes that time. Looks like Orlando Craig was there. Boy, look at John Cooper. He is really unhappy about something. Wants a timeout apparently now. And Ohio State stops the clock with 4.16 to go. Wanted a timeout right away. Lost on that play of about two or three yards. So it'll be second down in a long yardage situation coming up for, uh, for Michigan State when we resume at these words from your local station. That's the story here in East Lansing. Michigan State leading Ohio State. 4-16 left to be played. Fourth period of play. Meanwhile, Notre Dame has defeated the Navy 22-7 today. That's the final score back east. Notre Dame remains unbeaten. Second down and about 12 yards to go. A little bit more than 12 yards to go for Michigan State. Second and 12 for Michigan State. That's Ryzen in motion. Blake Ezar. Ran out of real estate but had enough for the first down. He almost made the turn down the sideline. 17-yard pickup. Craig forced him out of the near side at the 35-yard line. Everybody in the stadium knew that Michigan State was going to run the football. Ohio State is stacked on the line of scrimmage to prevent the run, but the great blocking out in front for Blake Ezor. Then his speed out to the outside. Picks up the first down. 
Jimmy Peel was shaken up on the play for Ohio State. He's helped from the field. And from the 35-yard line, Michigan State, first and 10 in their own territory. Ezor cuts it back. Short of the midfield marker, the 48-yard line of Michigan State. Vincent Clark chased him down. What a fine job of running by Blake Ezor on those last two plays. This one going to the left, cutting back to the right, picking up another first down. And George Perlis takes him over the sideline and said, you know, Blake, you're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement, I'd say. We're going to give you a little rest right now. Michigan State on a first and 10. Island Hickson comes in. He's short, 25 carries, 138 yards. First down. Hickson going wide. Polini chases him down, but needed help to force him out of play. Help came from Tim Rutledge. Gain of about seven to the 46-yard line of Ohio State. Wayne, you don't get outside the way Michigan State has been doing unless your wide receivers block. That time, Andre Risen in on the block. He shows you that not only is he a threat in the pass patterns, but he'll stick his helmet into the block. He runs great patterns, a decent blocker downfield, no question about that, and he has great hands. He's a tremendous athlete. That's number one at the bottom of your screen, Andre Risen. To the ground game again, and hits. Hickson picks up that first down. Highland Hickson came into the game with just 136 yards for the season, 106 of which came at, against Northwestern. Today, you know, he's almost doubled that, it seems like. He's up around 200 yards or thereabouts. George Furless looking out from the sideline. Keeps telling his kids, he says, hey, listen, unless you're a Rockefeller or a Ford, you're just a brick in the wall, so don't take yourself too seriously. He's got a great philosophy, and he really cares about his kids. John Cooper looking on with great concern as they call for the change. They want a measurement on this play. Like so many other coaches in the Big Ten now, he really emphasized, I'm speaking of Perlis, really emphasizes that education. You're here. Get go the best school. out of it. Yep. Go to school. Get your degree. And if we win a few football games along the way, hey, that's great. Ohio State rushing defense. Season average, 180.7. Today, wow. Tells you something about the effectiveness of the offensive line and the quickness and speed of Ezor and Hickson from the tailback spot for Michigan State. First down, Spartans at the 43. Ezor with a wall green blockers in front of him again a white wall formed quickly <laughs> defensively and Ohio State showed good pursuit and breaking through to make the hit on the play John Sullivan you know a couple of yards you notice how both running backs look to the hole and always look to cut back coming up on the three-minute mark left to be played in this football game Ohio State trailing by 10 they have taken one time out of the second half Michigan State has had 71 plays in the game, 65 wow. have been running plays. Mm. Wonder what they'll do here. He's <laughs> <laughs> our stutter set for a moment, and Clark wouldn't buy it. Vincent Clark made the tackle. Blake Ezor down to the 31 or 32 yard line, and thereabouts, close to a first down. Looks like he's picked it up as they mark it just inside the 32-yard line. Michigan State started 0-4-1, but boy, they played some big people on that schedule. Take a look at Notre Dame and Florida State. They lost to Rutgers. That's one game in the opener they'd like to have back, although Rutgers is a much better team than people expected when they came up here on opening day to play. They tied Iowa here in the rain. In what was virtually a war. First and ten now at the 31 yard line. Boyer in motion. Ezor. Inside the 30. Zach Dumas made the stop. Ninth play of the drive. I've made my decision, Wayne. Player of the game. I know offensive who I want. line, right? Gotta I go with the offensive line. I don't think you'll get an argument here. 
offensive line. I think uh, Michigan State deserving player of the game honors. Players, so to speak. Let's be grammatical about it. Yeah. Second down. Six yards to go. Again, Boyer in motion. Pitcher. Got by Polini. Penalty marker now. Island Hickson fighting for that first down yardage. Penalty marker down. Zach Dumas got there late to make the hit on the tackle. Penalty marker came before the play was over, or so it appeared, holding the call against Michigan State. Holding Michigan State. 30 left to go. Ohio State's out of the ball game, but you, know, you notice out there they're still hitting. They're not quitting. They're, they're coming, making their pop. That says something about their character. The, not only uh, their character as individuals, but of their coaching and their coaching staff. And this is a program, this Ohio State program, a great tradition. And they're down this year. There's no question. They lost a lot of people. As I, I mentioned the name, Showalter on the defensive line. Gerd in the inside linebacking core. McCray has had an injury-riddled campaign. John Sullivan came back from an E problem to play this year. They also, on offense, lost a couple of important people offensively to them. Their starting wide receiver, Everett Ross, uh, to academics. Vince Workman was, uh, I guess, fell prey to NCAA regulations concerning agents, you could say. So they've lost a lot of people. They've gone through a struggling year. This has been the year when people have geared up to beat Ohio State. But this program will come back. This program's going to rebound. There is no question about that. And John Cooper will certainly, before it's all said and done in Columbus, he'll be hailed as one of the better coaches that program has had. And they've had some great ones. We've got a break in the action. Third down, about 11 yards to go coming up. When we resume, John Cooper looks on for the Ohio State sidelines. His team trails by 10. Today's Budweiser player of the game is the offensive line of the Michigan State Spartans. Tony Mandarich, Kevin Robbins, Robert Kula, Vince Tata, David Martin. They are the player of the game, players of the game from Michigan State. They opened the holes that led to 100-yard rushing days for both Blake Ezor and Hyland Hickson here today. Congratulations to the Michigan State offensive line, today's Budweiser players of the game. Third down for Michigan State. Third down and eight yards to go at the 29-yard line. In Ohio State territory. Boyer in motion. Blake Ezor going wide. Not going very far. Matter of fact, lost, lost a yard or two on the play. Over to make the tackle, Polini. Mark Polini has been very active from the safety position. John Cooper still scrapping on the sideline. Wants a timeout here. Buckeyes timeout. John Cooper hasn't quit. This ball game's over, but he doesn't know it. Loss of yardage back to the 33 yard line. Third down. Uh, make that fourth down coming up, and now 11 yards to go. 53 seconds left to be played. Michigan State leads it 20 to 10. Uh, we'll be heading to Columbia for Indiana and Illinois next week, but right here we've still got a few more seconds left to go in this one. We'll be back. And we're going to be in Champaign next week. I said Columbia or Columbus. Apologize for that. Illinois, the fighting line out of their home. And they'll be taking on Indiana in what could be a very important game as far as bowl prospectus is concerned for those two programs. Champaign, Illinois. Illinois and Indiana next week on the Big Ten Network. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Fourth down, about 11 yards to go, and the offense stays on the field for Michigan State. Blake Ezor, perhaps one final carry. Penalty marker is dropped on the play. Ezor inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Again, as I mentioned, a penalty marker down over to make the tackle Tim Rutledge and Orlando Craig. 47 seconds left to go. Ohio State will come back one last time offensively. Clipping against Michigan State. That's the second clipping call we've seen on the Spartans in the second half. That's usually their wide receiver coming in on the block. Clipping the call, and it's declined. First down, Ohio State. They get one last crack at it. 47 seconds to go. I believe they have two timeouts remaining. I'm not sure. Is it two or one? 
You know, I must mention on, on John Cooper calling those timeouts, he knows the game's over, but this is a lesson for his team. He wants them to grow. He wants them to never quit. I stand corrected. They have no timeouts remaining, according to the scoreboard. They take over from the 27. Greg Fry looks to the air. Being rushed on the play. Throws up a prayer to Ellis. Made the catch near the 30 and got shoved back. A gain of three, maybe four yards, depending, depending on the spot of the ball. Percy Snow on the tackle. Bill Johnson was in there harassing the quarterback. Give him a gain of three, second and seven. Fry again, looking downfield. And the pass thrown behind Scotty Graham near the 40-yard line. The far side, the big fullback. 16 seconds left to be played. Much of this crowd of 76,000-plus heading for the exits now. As the Spartans have controlled this one throughout, but I'll tell you, Ohio State hung in there pretty well. Turnovers in the second half really killed him. With all the pressure that Greg Fry has been under this afternoon, I think he's really done a fine job. He had one miscue, the interception, that when they were threatening a touchdown, but he's done a good job of not throwing the ball up for grabs. Three men on the line, everybody else back deep defensively for Michigan State. Fry goes underneath and it's off the hands of Bryant. Just across the 30-yard line. Boy, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? 18 to 32 now for Fry, 213 yards. One touchdown, two interceptions. Well, it's this time of the ball game. Your, the ball players say, let's get it over. Let's go back to the locker room, lick our wounds, and get ready for next week. 11 seconds left to be played. 20 to 10. Michigan State over Ohio State. Couple of Spartans shaken up on the play, but it looks like they'll be all right. The students charge onto the field, and this one is in the books. There's John Cooper coming over to congratulate George Perlis. The Michigan State Spartans have made it two in a row over the Ohio State Buckeyes. George Perlis and company winning their third game in a row. There is Cooper making his way over to shake hands with Perlis. The final score, Michigan State 20, Ohio State 10. And with that victory, Michigan State now 3-4-1. And, and in a moment, we'll be chatting with the head coach of the Michigan State Spartans, George Burles. Ohio State suffering the loss, snapping a modest one-game winning streak. George Burles is about to join us on the sidelines. We're going to give him the headset now, and we're just about ready to go and coach Perlis can you hear it yeah I hear you all right coach congratulations on a, on a nice win today thank you anytime you have a chance to come on the winning end of Ohio State you feel fortunate and you're happy and I guess that's all you can say had to be a little frustrating in the early going of the ball game you dominated that first period of play but we found yourself behind uh, due to some mistakes in crucial situations well I think that uh, the started off with the punt out of bounds it wasn't spotted uh, right because uh, the guy in the sideline had no help back there then the fumble I think uh, your your cameras show that it uh, the ball was down and then in the end zone there's a possibility that that was a touchdown, and then we had the clip to lose the touchdown. Probably lost three or four touchdowns today. <laughs> George, you got to be feel great about the offensive line blocking today. They really were dominant, weren't they? Well, they've been dominant for a couple years. Pat Morris has come with us, and coming from Southern Cal, he's done a great job with that offensive line. They play well for him. I don't know what his formula is, but he gets the most out of them. Has Highland Hickson come into his own? Highland came into his own today. Highland's a player. I told him on the sidelines, you're back now, brother. <laughs> George, did you expect it? Did you want to run as much as you did today? I mean, it was incredible how much you ran the ball. Well, we uh, it was windy down here. We thought we could do it. We did what we do best, and at this game, at this time, it was running. A couple years ago, we led the conference in passing. Now we're we're doing the running pretty well. Well, George Perlis, we want to thank you very much for all your help on this game and for uh, visiting with us uh, following the game. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Here's Pat Morris. <laughs> all right. <laughs> George Perlis. We'll talk to Pat in just a second coming up.
Again, the final score, Michigan State over Ohio State, 20 to 10 here in East Lansing, and there are the players of the game, the Spartan front line on offense. We'll be back. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski were back at East Lansing. Michigan State has won its third in a row. Second in a row over Ohio State, 20 to 10, the uh, victory today. And joining us on the sidelines now is the offensive line coach, Pat Morris. And Pat, congratulations on a great performance by your team, your line, to help pave the way for 372 rushing yards. And we recognize them as the uh, Big Ten players of the game for this particular contest. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And also, there's a back that goes along with that. Good running backs help out a good offensive line, and I really appreciate that. Pat, you coached at Southern Cal. You coached some great people at Southern Cal. James Fitzpatrick, Jeff Bragel, and now you've got Tony Mandrich. Where does he stack up in the people you've coached? Uh, Tony is about the best court player that I ever coached. Uh, he's, he's special. He's up with the classes of Keith Van Horn and Anthony Munoz. He's just an excellent football player and just keeps on playing. Pat, you ran the football 72 times, only threw it six. Is that about what the game plan was to, to be? Uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> you know, at least you thought you may get more holding calls there if you're running that much. <laughs> yeah. But uh, basically, I think we, we thought we could pound them. I, uh, the guys came on the sidelines and said, Coach, we can take them. And I just told George, let's go with it, and we just stayed with the run. You notice there was so many cutback blocks. Your offside was really doing a heck of a job. Yeah, well, that happens a lot with us because they go towards Tony a lot or they go with our flow, so we tell the backside, you're just as alive on the block as the front side, and then you get those cutback lanes. Well, Pat Morris, we want to thank you for taking time out with us. Congratulations on a marvelous offensive line that you put together. And, you know, we talked so much about Mandridge, but Dave Martin's come along in the center position. Vince Tate is a bona fide player. So is uh, Robert Kula and Kevin Robbins. They've done a great job. Indeed, you got to work it together as a team, and they did today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Pat Morris, the offensive line coach for Michigan State, will be back. <laughs> Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski were back at Spartan Stadium. But, you know, even when Michigan State trailed early in the ball game, you got the feeling that they were going to come on. Oh, they were so dominant, as we talked about all afternoon. The offensive line had a game I love, you know, running the football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you would as a former running back at Illinois. 